and some Jund. I wanted to try Rabble Master, but I didn't know if like I could play Rabble Master and um I didn't know if I could play Rabble Master and oh what is this? Come on. And Hazret. Pull this over. So this hand. I won three matches against Mono Dream Tron, lost two matches against Mono Green Tron in the bottom challenge yesterday. I won three matches against Mono Green Tron and lost two matches against Mono Green Tron. Wow. You wanna know what another thing that frustrates me about the modern challenge? Um, this hand is like I guess you gotta keep hands like this if you're playing John. Like I don't have any pressure, but I've got a discard spell and some lands. Um what frustrates me about the modern challenge is that you get so many more people. All right, those hands. We're gonna we're in trouble now. You get so many more people than any other challenge. Oh, that was a good draw, but it's still the same prize pullout. I wish that there was a way that we could change that. So I think I'm gonna take the Ravager because it's just like the cranial plating hits this, and the Ravager is just like annoying because it's gonna make me kill two things, and I really only want to kill this. So, we'll take the Ravager. Yeah, that's the frustrating part about that, in my opinion. So, this is what they drew. Okay. Oh, it cracks me here. Oh, that's that's going to do it. So, I think we're just going to terminate this signal pass at the beginning of combat. And then, hopefully, ride out this scavenging ooze. Yeah, they should scale the price report. In my opinion. Beginning of combat. The SCG does the same thing, which is a little frustrating. So hopefully this hand just kind of collapses for my opponent, which looks like it might. We know they've got a plating in their hand and a galvanic blast. So I think I'm still going to play Raging Ravine and Scavenging Ooze. The two less people on the challenge, I'd have cash instead of being dream crushed by the player. Oh, that sucks. I think I'm going to play the Raging Ravine and play Scavenging Ooze. And then so I can get two eats next turn. Because I can eat both of his creatures and... Um, I can eat both his creatures. Oh, man, now he's going to smoke my... Scavenging ooze, that sucks. So what does he have left in his hand that we know about? It's just the cranial plating, and he'll be able to cast that next turn. So now I can take the plating, or decay something, or I can take it and Liliana. Well, I can't take it and Liliana because of my mana situation, but I do think we're going to check it out here. I'm going to take the plating kind of hold on to this decay for as long as I can then go here they should scale the prize report for the iconic master PDQ probably playing for the playing for the lulls the only top 32 and there's already 200 yeah like that's that's what that, that frustrates me so what do I want to draw I want to draw Tarmogoyf pretty bad. Like, presumably 400 people will be in it before it starts. It's 2,000. They could at least... Yeah, I agree. I wish that they just scaled all that. I tweeted at MTG Lee about it. I mean, that, that's the biggest way to do it. Just, like, tweet at the people. Alright, well... We now have a game plan. We'll play this. Next turn, we'll probably play Liliana and tick up. Thing is, our opponent's going to be able to race us pretty pretty well. If I draw a land... Okay. This opponent comes in for three. Yeah, so now I've got to play, like, Liliana... Tick Liliana up to keep the cards out of my hand. Ditch this other Liliana, and then we're just going to start getting in with Hazard. 
We're taking two return damage, so. Yeah, I mean, like, capitalism is a beautiful thing. And if you want Wizards of the Coast to change, you have, you got to hit the wallet. But unfortunately, they're not going to change. If we all keep playing, like, that, that's the thing that's like, sucks, is that Magic is, like, the greatest game of all time. So that's pretty frustrating, like, how great the game is. I mean, like, so they can do whatever. So I wonder if I should start edicting just to clear blockers. Like, if I should just edict something here, or they, they attack Liliana. Okay. But I kind of just want to edict, throw this bob at him, and then attack. I think that's what I'm going to do. This Liliana's just not doing anything. So he sacks like an Ornithopter. It's just going to tax his mana here, like, make it so it's going to be harder for him to, to, uh, oh gosh, what was I going to say? So another alternative line here is I could go like Abrupt Decay on this and then play Bob. Or I could just play Bob and then hold up. I think that's better than chucking it. At least Bob attacks. Like, he's going to do damage to me, but my opponent's currently only doing one damage a turn to me. And it'll be two. It'll be, so they're doing two damage a turn to me, and I can have Decay. Well, this is interesting. I think I probably should, should play Bob. Bob, how's my chat showing up? By the way, I, I I messed with it a little bit. I want to make sure it's not quite. It's a little distorted. So let me let me lower it a tad. This is why I can't wait for the second for the second monitor. Let me go cancel here. So how do I win? Huck him. He goes to ten. He goes to fifteen. I attack. He probably goes to ten. Then I've got abrupt decay. I go to. Presumably nine, or presumably six. Rendrick still goes to continue to play regardless of the prize structure. There's some intrinsic value of playing the game. The other one of players and it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah, the game's so sweet. They got us. They got us by the gonads. I think I'm gonna play Bob and then decay one of these. I think that's the yeah. That's that's what that's the plan there. And we'll probably just decay anything to use our mana here because we're going to have to keep cards out of our hand because Bob and, Bob and Hazra is kind of a nombo. All right, so now we're going on the, the to the face plan here. Now, depending on how my opponent attacks... So I could just take three and then decay this. Opponent goes to 14, 10, well this is 5, 9, 11, so it doesn't quite work out, so I probably actually just need to save myself a point. And then hope Bob takes us to the promised land here. All right, that's not good. Flip a land. All right, we did flip a land. Okay, so we get a green. One, two, three. So we go to one. Oh, no, we're. Does my opponent have to block? Five, nine, eleven. Five. 7, 11, 13, they just animate this, attacks 2, 4, 5. So we actually can't ravine, because if we ravine, we fetch. Because he's only got 5 points on the table of damage. So I think we actually have to play this ravine. Yes, I think we have to play this ravine, and then just send in with these two. And then we're going to chuck a land at my opponent next turn. And then we're going to just hope to flip a land to Bob. Because I think it, I think on the board he puts us to one. It is early. I could be making a mistake. But I think it's two, four, five. And then he is presumably dead to anything. 
Master of Ethereum is two, four. It's the same thing. Puts us to one. Oh, no, he attacks and he kills us. Right, two, three. Yep. Opponent got it. Well, that's two, three, six. Yep. Yeah, that was the plan there. There, Ravine. Did you play John yesterday? Is that what you did? Is that why you are vocal? So I, I think the sideboard's actually not bad here. So I've got like these, these, this guy, this guy. And then I think I probably bring in the pulse also. First cards to come out are Liliana's. I don't know how good Hazard is, but I know that I probably want to cut like two of my thought seizes. So I think I want to take these cards out before I take out Hazard. Yeah. What are you going to do? Um, I could see cutting one more discard spell or cutting Hazard, either one of them. Yeah, it was slow. I cut one card. You always play blue white. Yep. Uh, I have to cut one card. It's probably has. It's probably either an Inquisition or a Hazret. And I think I would just like ways to close out the game. I might bring this in on the draw and cut the Hazrets on the draw. But so I made a Rune Halo to beat Storm and promptly. But against zero storm decks, despite all my losses in the past three challenges. Yeah, I mean that's that's modern. Like that's that's why it's a little frustrating of a format. All right, so this hand's good. Like we've got everything that we could ever want. I mean, hopefully, hopefully our first draw is a Tarmogoyf. Yeah, thank you all for being here. MTG bots looking out for me there. I tried to put like this card in here. I don't know if this. I think brutal. I don't think brutality is very good against affinity because it's like two mana kill something sorcery speed and it doesn't kill everything. You know, I think it's a bit too. Like I only really like brutality in modes where in matchups where like both you can do both modes. And I mean, unlike that game right there, I'm usually not losing to affinity like when it's close. Usually they're like attacking for a million or hitting me with an Nets champion, you know? Oh, is Mulligan in five. I think it's worth it to buy any deck on Magic Online that you are willing to put the time into and learn. Because there is no, there's no deck in Modern, in my opinion, that's like far and away better than anything else. I'm not, I don't think it's worth bolting this. But... In modern, you're going to get rewarded. I'm going to get an overgrown tomb. In modern, you're rewarded by just knowing the format and knowing all your matchups. So that was an interesting draw. I think now we're going to go Thought C or Inquisition and then head this Black Leaf Cliffs up for a, for a Decay or for a Lightning Bolt. We'll hit this Arcbound Ravager. And then we'll bolt the Signal Pest. I like Teamer Battle Rage as a card. Like, Teamer Battle Rage is, like, stress relief for me. And then I'm going to bolt anything. Even if he doesn't play the Signal Pest, I'm going to bolt this because I just want to empty my hand out. So that I'll be able to play this Hazard on four and, wreck and just start going to town. That's, like, the best draw on our deck. But also, like, yeah, there's been a bit more Tron in the last couple months, but still, that's, what, six per, like, at most, it's 5% of the metagame. That's why you can just do, that's why, that's literally why Modern is great and why Modern is frustrating, because every deck is between three, every, there are so many reasonable decks that are between three and 6% of the metagame. So you can, you can just do whatever you want. We get a tap land here. We should be in pretty good shape at this point. Pro 
probably just get a blood. Um, get stomping ground. I want another green land and another red land. It's the best. It, in my opinion, it's the best and the worst part about modern. So I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna start using these spells in my hand, just because if I top deck a land, I want to be able to hazard it. So I'm probably gonna start being pretty liberal with these terminates. So I'm on the opinion that, like, I would rather just punt those matchups, and um, I would rather just punt all those matchups. I'm not playing Blood Moon or Fulminator Mages. Like, I just don't think that it's going to give you enough percentages in there. And any deck that's, like, worth its salt is going to have an answer for those. Like, they're going to know, like, hey, there's Blood Moon coming in. I'm going to pack for my Reclamation Sage. Well, that's unfortunate. So, again, we're just going to keep beating with this Tarmogoyf. Yeah, like, I would much rather, like, I almost played, that's why I'm playing Hazaret as just, like, another option. I think Rabble Master is pretty good. All right, so we're going to take two from this, and then we're actually just going to, we're going to untap and Pyroclasm. Like, I would rather just race them and try to kill them. I guess I should have killed my... I should have hit the Vault Scourge, probably. All right. Well, now we're... Oh, this isn't that Metalcraft? Sweet. Got Achievement Unlocked. We're going to kill a Master of Ethereum on stream. If I go Shatter Shock, my opponent's dead. Yeah. Destroy Target Artifact. Two damage. Yeah, I almost tried Rabble Master, but I didn't know if having, like, like, I didn't know if you could have Rabble Master and Hazret, and I think Hazret's, to what I've seen, like, I haven't played a lot of Jun, but, like, I've definitely been losing to cards like, um, I've been losing a lot to, uh, I've lost to Hazret. I've just been impressed by Hazret. So. Hey there, Blood Moon coming in. Good thing I literally already run main deck Oblivion Stone. Yeah, like, I would much rather just try to be aggressive. That's why I play, like, makes Rabble a bit worse. Again, like said, I, I agree with you, but uh, this hand is gas. My, my lands are awkward. But I guess we're gonna we're gonna keep this in like probably fetch basic swamp on one and inquisition our opponent. I should have I was talking about boarding these out on the draw, but for more discard, but But how many How many bolts are there really? You know, like there there's so much of the format is just nonsense. That's a great card. That's what I think. I think there's just way too much nonsense where it doesn't, like, you can make all these, I would just make your deck as quick as possible and then, like, have a good, good sideboard. Like, Rattle Master's fine, you just gotta know that it's coming out in a lot of matchups after sideboard. I think you, I think it's much better, like, to have Rattle Master in your deck or Hazard in your deck and be able to handle random just flack that's in modern. Okay, so we'll play the Nexus. Never. We're never playing Mono Red Blood Moon Control. Alright, so that's a good draw. So I think it's more important to just take a turn off here. The problem is he's going to Galv Blast my Liliana, which kind of feels bad. So I'd like to see if I can set this Liliana up. I don't know if it's worth... It's probably worth just playing Kuligon's Command next turn and not playing the Liliana. Uh, doing great with their good cards. But John is already great at doing that with their good cards. I mean, thought these I okay. Yeah, 
It is a card quality deck. Yeah, so the next turn we're just going to Shatter Shock. And try to play this Liliana when my opponent can't Gal Blast it. There's the island. Alright, so now I actually think I'm going to go 1 2. And I'm probably going to fetch my second basic, um, whatever it is, my second basic mountain. Because if I go bing, bing, they can still cast it. So I go to 5, then I go to 11, then I go to 9, but then I start playing Liliana. I think it's worth just getting this Galvanic Blast out of my opponent's hand so that this Liliana can take the game over. And then I'm going to have to like start thinking about like Etch Champion. Twelve viewers, guys. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate all of your support. If you guys like what you see, please hit the follow button. And if you don't like to see, being here is being here is just fine. If any of you guys are getting into Moto, you guys check out CardHoarder.com. They they sponsor the stream, and they're like the best. I think they're the best bot chain around. We gotta fix our basic lands. It's for the tilt factor. That's what we're here for. Okay, so now we're going up on this. So this is gone. And then I'm going to play a Raging Ravine. And now we have our own Planeswalker to, like, just take this game over. So they attack it with everything. It's going to go to – Liliana goes to one. Then I put it to two. Have to hold up Terminate. I do need a threat. I mean, this this Hazard's gonna gonna do it because I'll be able to play Hazard next turn. But yeah, all my streams are also archived on my YouTube channel. So all right, he's, that's a good sign for the home team. Again, we're gonna keep playing out our cards next turn. So next turn we have six mana. We can't quite play Hazard and Chuck a land. So we're definitely going to terminate the Ink Moth Nexus because then we can clean this up. I'm so torn about this card because, like, when this card is good, like, whether I'm playing Abzan, Jund, or Death Shadow, when this card is good, it is, it is just completely insane. Like, it mops up a game like no, like no other. You know, like, uh, this card just single-handedly beat my opponent. So Moto is tweaking out a little bit, so I'm gonna I'm gonna restart it here. So excuse me while I while I restart Moto here. Picture my wife, the most beautiful woman in the world. Yeah, I think my opponent should have just attacked me. I mean, I don't know, unless. Unless they head away to, I don't know. It's it's difficult because that card's like uh, the card's just the abyss. It's just like reads target opponent sacrifices a creature. But yeah, if you guys uh, like to see, definitely check out that YouTube channel. So I got into streaming because I wanted to work on my public speaking skills. Because in my off in my profession, there's quite a bit of. Uh, training that goes on I should just blank out like sad 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 Mufaso. I should just blank out my face I should just put a block in front of it and then just have my wife there or I should just crop myself out of it all right let's get another match so I got into streaming because I wanted to work on my um, I want to work on my public speaking skills, but, um, but then I started to like get a like marginal amount of success and, um, I got into it now because I kind of want to do something that just supplements the habit a little bit because like playing magic is expensive 
And then between, I got like, I don't know, I got a couple subs going on. It's like, look at the, how do you look in the mirror every day? I got a couple subs, but like the best way to get everything going on is like YouTube. Once I can start monetizing my videos, that's where it's all about. So, if you really want to help, that's how we do it. So, Sam has nothing to do on turn one, which I feel kind of sad about, but we can just go like threat, threat, threat. I think this is a hand where you play Tarmogoyf. Well, I don't know. Let's see what my opponent does. My opponent mulligans six cards. I'm inclined to lead with, like, depending on what my does, opponent does, to lead with the one that I want the less, the least. Well, I don't spend multiple hours a day looking at my home screen. So, touche. Captain Sarcasm. So they put a card on top. I don't recognize my opponent's name, so I don't really know what they're playing. I might have to make some more Kofefe. Oh, yeah. What are the odds that none of my creatures are going to matter? The Hazaret should absolutely be awesome here. That's a really good card. So I think I'm going to lead on Bob. Because my opponent mulliganed. If they don't have it, I think Bob's just going to run away with the game. Uh-huh. Maybe you should. There's a very low percentage chance that this thing survives. If I see a white land, I'm going to throw up a little bit. At least we have a pulse. Oh, we have a... What is this? A misty rainforest. Am I playing against, like, an infect deck? I'm playing against a bug deck? Oh, God. I'm going to be able to K-command this. Let's hope he doesn't have a... Even if we get a mutagenic growth, it's pretty good. Pium, 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 pium. And even my opponent saves this with a growth, like we're still in pretty good shape. So I have noticed that this and this is a slight nombo. Like, it ha it has been a, a little a little annoying. Oh, we got a we got a vines that is gas. You would have played Maelstrom Pulse to guarantee get the uh, get the two for one there. Protection from white and red. Alright. Hopefully we draw lands, so we can double spell. That's an also a really good one. But I actually think oh it's white and red, so yeah, we're just gonna play Liliana. Yeah. So my whole the reason why I wanted a, the K command was because the K command is a guaranteed two for one. And if my opponent, uh, gosh, what was I gonna say? If my opponent wants to do anything, even though my opponent saves it, we still get the value out of it. All right, now we're just cooking with gas. I'm actually just gonna like ditch this hazard. Attack for two. Mona dishes the land. Play a Tarmogoyf, and that's it. We're not gonna. We're gonna play. We're gonna play the removal game here. That that's also true. Maybe I should have saved it like in this situation right now. I can buy that. Didn't think about that. So I will accept this two damage, this whatever here. Rancor. So what can they have? They can have a Blossoming Defense, or I can just permanently counter this Rancor. I think we're going to try to permanently counter the Rancor. This is like, 
the complete not what you're supposed to do against Affinity, Boston Defense, sure. But I think I wanted to go for it just because of the Rancor. Getting the Rancor. Yeah, I would agree. So yeah, we're our, we do take a shot here. This falls off. Opponent gets the Rancor back. So yes, what I did there was like, it, it's good to know that when you're playing against Affinity, I think I'm going to get Stomping Ground. When you're playing against Infect, you should not interact with them on their main phase. And I guess, but I think the value of being able to get the Rancor gone forever was worth it there to make an exception. No, that makes sense. That totally makes sense. No, I think it's worth, like, because that's the only way to get rid of Rancor for good. And my Lightning Bolt still trades with a Blossoming Defense. So I, I, I totally would not have done that had... I not I would not have done that if so his last card's Rancor. If that card was anything but Rancor, I would not have done that. So I'm gonna play another time of life. And now now like I said, we're not going to go fall into anything here. We're gonna oh I should have played my land, it was not thick in there. Oh, you're saying double goyf was the right thing? Yeah, I was chatting with, uh, I was talking with the chat, so it, it might not have, I might have missed that. Probably sounds like I did. So, turns out we got lucky anyways, but, so this Hazret's probably not great. These are great. This is good, this is good, this is good. I don't think the Pulse is very good, it's a little clunky. The Pyroclasm's probably good. They Rancor every turn on the Nexus. It takes up almost their whole turn and leaves them with exactly one mana to use. Yeah, Archmage. I mean, I, I get that. I get that, but... I determined that I, I didn't necessarily want to go for that. Like, I thought that it was better to permanently get the Rancor off the table because it, like, helps fight inevitability. But then maybe I'm drawing cards off Bob anyway, so it doesn't really matter. You think Grudge is a... Con yeah, Grudge hits Ink Moth, but I'm not sure that it's better than any of these other cards, right? Like, I want the discard. You don't like the Veil? I can buy that, especially on the draw. It's probably better on the play. Yeah, veil not great agreed. Okay. So I think that if I want to play that, I think this card's better than Liliana of the Veil. And I think I think each one of these are better than Liliana's. I could see doing this. Having eight discard spells. Kind of turns into a little more leaner deck. And if I'm doing this, we probably can cut a Raging Ravine and maybe make room for a random grudge. Yeah, Ooze isn't, Ooze isn't necessarily great, but it's just a way to win the game, right? Like, I'm not like, fuck yeah, scavenging you is on two, but at least it's a bear. Yeah. Look at this, we're a Death Shadow deck. We have eight discard spells. That's what I'm talking about. I'm kind of, I'm also kind of by like the Ancient Grudge after, like, coming in. I don't necessarily really like the Pulse, especially if I'm cutting a land. Like, I want kind of less threes. I only have four threes in my deck. So I think this is what we're going to do here. I, w I would board in spell... Like, it all depends. Spell bomb's a card, like, how many cards do I have to take out? You know, like, that's the real question. All right, we will keep this. You 
you would be okay with one grudge. I want a mulligan, which is always nice. All right, so we drew a bob. So, like, part of me wants to be greedy and play Overgrown 2 untapped, but that doesn't really seem like an adult decision. So I guess I'll just Ravine, and then we're just going to try to collect the Brutality in next turn. Yeah, I mean, it would. I would have to. I would have to build my deck in a very radical way to have Spellbomb come in in this matchup. I think. I think I would have to have a lot of things going around. This card's going to be annoying. All right, so now I think we just play Dark Confidant because that Bob's going to be able to. Because like it's now turned into a bit of a card advantage war and I don't, I need another land. So I think it's worth it here to just play this guy and then get out here. Dude, I love talking about adult decisions while playing a children's card game. Don't, don't make fun of me. What is this? Ooh, opponent inquisitions be back. play death shadow yeah it's like annoying so you want to know how you beat this card from playing death shadow you play is it static caster that's how you beat this you either just kill them which is like lingering souls or just huge death shadows but if you get into a point of the game where it's like an awkward draw like this is it static caster turns this it, like they, they cancel each other out basically and this is how you come back from that I don't think it's right to Inquisition when, like, we want to hit our land drops, I think. That's a good draw. That's another good draw. All right, so let's play this. Let's check out what they have going on. Yeah. All right, so we're definitely going to take Vines. And then there's no way we die next turn, so I actually think that we're going to play a Tarmogoyf. Well, that's why you have Traverse Uvenwald. You don't have to draw it. Yeah, so we're playing Tarmogoyf, right? He goes Pendlehaven here, hits me for two. Well, he actually can't go, Pend he can't go Pendlehaven and play this Blade Stinger. Yeah. We're going aggro. It is nice that, like, I can fight this on this axis here. Like, these two here are kind of canceling each other out. But I play Grixis and Cry Man. That's what you deserve to cry. You to play two Bobs. Okay. There's a land. There's another Bob. So I can just hold up, I can't hold up three removal spells, so I might as well hold up two. So I think I'm just going to kill this right now. It's going to grow Tarmogoyf by two points. They're going to draw a card, but if I do this, if I go like hit here, then I can play, have, I can either have like, well, this is a little annoying, because I can't, I, I, in order for me to double spell, I can't have two removal spells up, but our opponent's only got one card. Triple Bob. I think we're going to push this. Crack for seven. I should have bolted this. I should have I should have bolted it, this. This is a mistake here. Because, well, I guess it, uh, well, so I go, I hit for seven. I go to ten. Play another Tarmogoy. I get for six, I go to eleven. Play another Tarmogoy. Eight, ten, bolt kills them next turn. My well, bolt doesn't even, well, Eight, ten. So they're gonna go to eleven. So yeah, I guess I guess it was right to push this. Reveal four drop, three drop. Yep. I'm totally cool with dying to Bob. Like, I'm pretty sure if you play this deck and you're not willing to die to our confidant, then like, 
What 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 are we doing? You know? Alright, land. That's like not a terrible draw from our opponent. So is there any way that we die? I don't think so. Haven't really done the math out, but so this is two. Okay, we don't act now. I guess we could have acted there if we wanted to, because it beats mutagenic growth. This is eight. Okay, we're going to take this. So I don't think I don't think we're going to bolt on our end step. We're going to play around spell pierce. Dude, death right shaman was so messed up. Like I can't believe they let us play with that card. I played one Legacy tournament with Death with uh, Deathrite Shaman, and I've never played Legacy before. I, I played it like kind of, but I played one matchup. Well, I played one tournament of Bug Delver, my first tournament ever casting Brainstorm. Okay, and at an SCG, and I got sixty fourth, and I only got sixty fourth because Death Shadow or because uh, Deathrite Shaman is just not all right. After playing only like two or three matches with that card, I understood that like this card's not okay. Like, you cannot, like, th this thing just does, I had, I had so many hands that were like, Death Rite Shaman, Fetch Land, Wasteland, Hymn to Turak. Well, his hand's insane against a combo deck, right? I guess we're gonna keep this. You can't mulligan hands like this, I don't think. Yes. Oh, man. My hand's terrible. Hopefully, we can hit a payoff. The thing is, like, Deathrite Shaman's fine. What makes Deathrite Shaman, like, Deathrite Shaman's fine in the fair matchups. All right, that's a good draw. We're definitely going to Inquisition our opponent, though, because we want to hit a payoff. We did. Um, Deathrite Shaman's all right in the f fair matchups, I think. I think what really, where Deathrite Shaman really shines is against combo decks, where they can't kill it. That's what I think. I think you either have to, like, there, there's, there's a, it, it puts more pressure on combo decks to win before Deathrite Shaman becomes relevant, and Deathrite Shaman packed up with disruption is just like really oppressive to combo decks in my opinion. So we're definitely gonna push. Yeah, we definitely. So we're gonna push one of these signal pests in combat. I'm gonna get some. Oh, I guess I got plenty of coffee. Dude, this is the sweetest coffee mug of all time. My. One of my friends got this for me, and I want a dog so bad that this thing is just awesome. Like, it says the dog father on it. Yeah, man, that's why Shaman's just really messed up. So I'm probably going to play Liliana next turn and Edict my opponent. Like, I don't see this. This game's not moving in a direction where I'm ever going to... Oh, that's bad. This game's not moving in a direction where I'm ever going to be able to eat it the next champion, and I should just try to get something out of this Liliana, even though it's pretty bad. Yeah, now we're probably just dead. This signal, the Steel Overseer is going to give us the business. So my opponent hits me for two, three next turn. So I can, if I draw a removal spell next turn for the Steel Overseer, we might, we might have a chance. I don't think, yeah, I don't think Miracles was, I think Miracles was wrongfully banned, in my opinion. But I think it's stupid for Wizards of the Coast to, like, not really care about Legacy. Why are they attacking this Liliana? This is so stupid. I think it's agreed, I think it's stupid for Wizards to ban things. Yeah, we're, we're dead now. I think it's really stupid for the Wizards to ban things in a format like Legacy when they obviously don't support it. But I guess there's more Legacy GPs this year, so maybe they're changing things around. So we're going to board the same way we did last time. Oh, no, I don't, actually don't even remember how we boarded last time. We got the Veils were gone. Um, I think we boarded out some number of Discard. I don't even remember how we sideboarded. Um, yeah, 
it was definitely a very good deck, but if you don't support the format, then you just just leave it and don't like don't invalidate because if you think about it, like you don't invalidate the investment because you can just play those cards in other decks. But if you think the time, like my time is worth a lot and in either my personal happiness or, and you just waste, you waste all the time that people put into that. I've cut one card. It's probably an Inquisition. You like cutting Goyf or two if needed. I find that to be a legitimate, like, that's a much more legit complaint, in my opinion. Uh, we're going to keep this hand. It's not great. Like, I wish I had something to do on one, but I don't think you can mulligan a hand against Affinity where you have these two cards. Yeah, like, these check pile mirrors are just, like, haymaker over haymaker over haymaker, you know? So, I just don't buy it. Let me get some coffee with my opponents. Okay, so games are very interactive with Checkpile, but they're not interactive when it comes to, like, I, I was watching, so my friend, I played in the Legacy Tournament, and, or played in the team event in Baltimore, and my friend was, like, we tried so hard to get some kind of an advantage in these, uh, in these check mirrors, but it just comes to the point where, like, obviously you have to play tight to start, you know, you can't, get this here you can't just like play like a moron in the beginning but the games devolve into like who rips you know which doesn't feel good when you're playing magic in my opinion so i think i'm just gonna play tarmogoyf and play this black leaf cliffs i think it's and then uh we're gonna hold up the second half of this ancient grudge i think it's important to establish a clock Yeah, Leovold, Leovold's messed up. Like, that card, that card is, is just really screwed up, in my opinion. So what's kind of cool here is we actually can beat an edge champion. My opponent plays it this turn. So I think we're just going to hit this in the back half just to use our mana. Opponent's going to move this over here. I could have gone Shatter Shock, but I think I want to play Hazret next turn. And if my opponent goes to be aggressive, then I can just bing bing, which looks like they're going to be a little aggressive here. Or they're, they're going to put it over here. This is all right. So if they decide to put it here, I might just play this Verdant Catacombs and then hold up shatter shock here and then my opponent's like in trouble Games are interactive. yeah that's kind of cool so now we're going to go like this just to pump tarmogoyf so which of these is most annoying probably the ravager and then I'm going to fetch in my main phase just to uh, grow Tarmogoyf a point. Well, that's magic, right? Magic's, magic's good if our opponent always knows what they're doing. So we're definitely casting this K command probably no matter what here because we just need to, we need to use our mana and empty our hand so that this Hazret can come down. Twenty-four viewers, guys. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate all your support. 
If you like it, hit the follow button. Steal Overseer and Signal Pass. So our opponent's last card is Master of Ethereum. So I think it's actually right to go Shatter, Shock, or Shatter Discard here. Because this Master of Ethereum is going to be kind of annoying if we don't have any way to get over the top of it. So destroy target art um, target player discards a card, destroy target artifact. Like it, there's a chance our opponent could like poison us out here, but it's gonna be difficult for them to to do that in my opinion, because they're gonna need to like two mana to animate each one of these. Then they have to attack each one of these. So it's only two, three I guess it's a two turn clock if they draw a land, so Maybe I was wrong there, but the Master's also bad for the home team. But this right here is a two-turn clock on its own, so my opponent does have to block with something. I would consider playing Fabiano's Rug List. I usually don't like playing uh, a control deck, but I would. I'd play anything, I think. I think that, like, so I really, I, I genuinely, like, enjoy the death shadow archetype and i like what death shadow does but i think that i am interested in playing other decks in the format purely to improve my death shadow game okay so this is good okay so my opponent did draw land it is a goif deck oh i, I should get rid of that there that uh that plug they were doing iconic masters 170 preview which seemed like a good deal at the time but now all of a sudden it's just it's not so if i go i think it's better for me to chuck this make him block and then play bob because i like he can just not block if i don't get this and then i'm dead to like a cranial plating i think like because he goes animate, animate. This is three, two, I'm at five, three. If he does animate this, it's three. He can't play and animate cranial plating. Yeah, I don't think my opponent is an out. I'm, I'm definitely not down for playing Huntmaster in modern at right now. Like, that seems crazy to me. Like, that card just does not seem very good, in my opinion. So let's get in here for two, for these. We'll make him force the block. This card has impressed me quite a bit. I tried to play this card in Death, Death Shadow, but, um, but I found that, like, I don't think this card plays well with counter spells. Game two. So I think the big question here is, is it worth cutting some of these hazards for like an Inquisition and a Thought Seize on the draw? I'm like, I'm inclined to think it is. Yeah, I don't know. I just think, I don't think, I think making meta calls in, in modern is just actively wrong. I think, I think the best thing that you can do is just play your deck and slant your deck to be aggressive and beat down in game one, and then I think you want to be able to morph it into something else in game two. What I could do is I could cut... I, I kind of want these, though. I don't know. It just kind of, like, finishes the game. But I could see, like, one of these being good. Maybe going, like, this and this is probably a better plan. No, I'm just not a fan of Huntmaster. I'm not a fan... So, okay, so I like Huntmaster as a card. I think Huntmaster... Like, I routinely tell my friends that Huntmaster is the biggest card that I am, like, sad that I didn't play. Yeah, no problem, Steve. No problem, Steve. You're playing in the Iconic Masters PTQ, right? Well, if, you, if you are, then good luck. Um... Like, Huntmaster is the best card, my favorite card that I never got to play with, but I just don't think it's good right now in Modern. Like, the fair matchups are few and far between. Um, 
half the fair matchups play one mana eight eights where like the hunt master doesn't matter and so like i just don't think that it's it's just very good it's a, definitely a really cool card that i like but yeah we'll keep this i like having a discard spell or two against affinity like their deck just kind of dirtles if you don't if you have a way to uh, hit like a payoff so hopefully my opponent just doesn't explode here and if i can if i can catch a payoff with this inquisition i feel good okay this is annoying Okay, so we've got one payoff and then another payoff. So we're going to hit this and then probably go Thoughtsy or go Inquisition Tap Land to get this Master of Ethereum. Actually, regenerate. Oh, man, Terminate. The little text on Terminate that nobody ever reads is that this Welding Jar will, like, not work. So if that's the case, I'm definitely going to play Dark Confidant. I want to hit lands. My opponent played... Blink. We played Ink Moth. Okay. There's Dark Steel. Oh, okay. That's that's not good. So now we're kind of on damage control. So if I regenerate this, they still have three artifacts. What happens? Yeah. Now we're so that's that's a big problem there. I mean, that's champion is how we lose this matchup. 26 viewers, guys. Uh, thank you all for the for the support here. I appreciate all you guys choosing to hang out here on your Monday, on your Sunday. Darksteel Citadel, so there's no way I'm killing this thing. But at least... What? My opponent's not interested in getting through this I think I'm just going to... I'm going to start using my cards here. Going here. And here. I'll take two. Now I can attack back. I just need to find a... I need to find, like, a... Uh, Kozilek's Return is my best draw. That's not bad also, because it's going to let me play Scavenging Ooze. So I can play Scavenging Ooze, activate it, and hit this Master, which I think I want to do. Yeah, so I think we're going to start with an attack for two. My opponent's not putting on any pressure, which is good. We're in a lot of trouble if our opponent draws, like, a Cranial Plating or an Arcbound Ravager. So, like, there's definitely a lot of issues that we have. And I'll hold up this green-black one because we've got a Fatal Push. And, like, again, yeah, no, I'm just going to start killing everything because, like, I don't really have priority targets... Because um, because we just are drawing so many cards that I'm just I'm not dying with cards in hand. Like I might just start pushing these ornithopters because it's just not worth dying with with resources that I didn't use. Oh, I forgot to Inquisition. We got Talkin and I just I zoned out. Oh, my opponent can't even play it. All right. All right. Opponent comes in and plus like. By just trading resources, it's going to allow my scavenging ooze to grow more. So. Alright, so let's push this. He probably doesn't save it. We'll eat it. Next turn, we will terminate this. And then we will discard spell. And then eat and attack. Pyroclasm's pretty big. Pyroclasm gets rid of my own Bob, but that's probably okay at this point. Because I have another one, and I can get two cards. So if I go, like, Pyroclasm, Attack, Pyroclasm, Inquisition, Eat. So then I should do that first, if I'm going to look to... I'll push a little more damage. 
But I do have to make sure that if I pyroclasm here, so maybe it's not right to pyroclasm. Clasm's actually not that great. I think it's actually better to just terminate this and then bash and eat. Yeah, I think it's just better to go here, terminate, eat a creature, bash for six. That's just not how that goes, my friend. God, such so much value. Attack with all. You would have, but don't I? Then I then my clasm just trades for this ornithopter and my bob, right? So this isn't that good. That's pretty bad. That's real bad. So this is seven. So we have to eat something in our upkeep here because our outs like Colagon's command. The the, the pyroclasm doesn't do anything, right? Because the pyroclasm just trades Bob in here. Okay, fatal push, bloodstain miner. So does this do anything? I go push here. It's still six damage. Right, I'm not crazy that the pyroclasm actually doesn't accomplish anything last turn. Like it does. I, I got dealt one more damage because this ornithopter was here, and I was dealt one more damage because this Bob. So maybe like I should have gotten Bob off the table. But now I'm just dead, right? Push. Unless py does Pyroclasm kill this? It does Pyroclasm doesn't kill this, right? I'm not crazy. I mean it's probably worth a try. I'm just like, I don't need this ornithopter. It's probably a decent block. And then we'll just see if this works. I don't think it does. But like a guy can dream. Yeah. All right. Opponent got me. Most, the, most, the, the most of all metal crafts. And that's how the black green decks lose this matchup. I'm actually going to go make some coffee. So we're going to wait for this to pop here. I didn't think Clasm killed the champ, but I thought it was worth a try. It is isn't a K return, yep. So that's, so I might be like jaded a little bit by like the Death Shadow experience of playing Black Green decks. I chose one K return and one Pyroclasm just because this card's cheaper. That was basically the only reason I did it. Because like whenever you play Death Shadow, you just want the cheaper card. nine rounds before top eight. That sounds miserable. That sounds absolutely miserable. All right, we got a heater. We need a land, and then this hand's like just straight sauce. And 
and puke. All right. My opponent's only got two lands, but their whole deck is lands, so, like, that doesn't really matter. We definitely need a third land now. Because we gotta, we just got to get these Lilianas going on. Okay, there's our third land. Let's play this tapped. Let's try to stay above 18. This is all, another reason why I thought about playing four bolts was because of this matchup. Like, I just thought that it was better to just have four lightning bolts in my deck. Don't don't draw a Farseek. Don't draw anything. Come on. Well, that's... I'll take that. They should cycle this. They should, I guess they shouldn't cycle this. Yeah, this is like, what? This is the reason why this deck's not great. So I think I'm ditching... I think I'm just going to ditch a Fatal Push. Because I really want to have this land here. Because I just, I just like, I feel like one of my best outs is drawing my two Hazrets. And I really want to, I really want that to happen. So, and if everything hits the fan, like this Hazret, or the Hazret's the only way I'm going to get out of this. Okay, so Thorn Ditch is a prime time. Decent ditch. At least we've got a Liliana. Like, the Liliana should be a saving grace. So something funny I was thinking about doing for, like, my emotes, because I have emotes, I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet, is that I think, screw a tribe order, Steve, oh, wow, they're going to miss a land drop? That's got to be, that's crazy. So now I just tick up, ditch Liliana, play my land Thoughtseize, and then K-Command them, I think. But if my opponent's going to keep Steve around here to block this, and that's all right. To attack this, and they're going to not hit land drops. I can't believe my opponents just skipped a land drop here. Like, that's just complete, like, that's just asinine. Okay, so we're definitely going to get rid of this. Play this. I could just go bing, bing. But my opponent has to sack this. There's just a madman. God. My opponent's crazy. I guess we're just going to go... I can't believe my opponent kept this Steve around. I mean... I don't know. Oh, you'd have killed the Relic while he was tapped out? I guess I didn't see that. That probably would have been all right, right? Opponent dishes an omen. So they've got Bolt, Primeval Titan. I'm confused. Archmage, what do you... So, like, I could have gone... Like, I wanted... To, I just wanted to put pressure on them to have this Liliana. Like, that's what I'm looking for to do here. Is to, like... Now they have to... Like, I kept the Steve around because now, like, this, they can't peck this. So that's why I wanted to shoot it because inevitably, like... Like, theoretically, they want to discard... Like, they, they're two Primeval Titans down and a Scape Shift down, so they're running out of, like, win cons. And now they just have this Lightning Bolt. I'm surprised they're not cycling this Relic more aggressively. I think, deal, I think killing Steve is fine. Cause then, like, if I if I kill if I like if I get rid of Steve, then, like, I'm in the driver's seat when it comes to dictating the pace of the game. What do you got here? We drew a search. Okay. Yeah, but now I'm putting pressure on them. Like, if they keep Steve in play, then they can discard that bolt and keep the keep the tight. If I don't, that's a good draw. If I um. They, they, if I keep Steven, if I get rid of, if Steve stays there, then the bolt's a free discard. If I, um, gosh, what was I going to say? If I get rid of Steve, why are they not cycling this relic? If I get rid of Steve, then I then kind of pin them into keeping this bolt in their hand. I feel like we're still just going to lose this one card combo. I really want 
keep that. What, what happens? Is that they'd have to go Titan and land off the top. Alright, we're going to go up again. And then we're going to... I don't, yeah, I don't understand why they're not popping this relic here. So this is 4, 16, 5, 11. Oh, they're looking for another bolt. Okay. That was a mistake. I, I, I messed up here. Yeah, I didn't think about this. Because, like, now... Yeah, I definitely screwed up now. That, that was a bad play. I should have plus this after damage. Because now they can go, like, land Titan. But they don't have a land either. Okay. So I think it's probably better to just keep plussing, ditch this scavenging ooze, and like I think this, the rage, playing the raging ravine is probably better than the scavenging ooze. Yeah, no, I made a mistake. By not not by keep. So what? Do you, so the way they win, are they popping this game? The way they win is by popping relic and hanging land titan, not by keeping the land. I think keeping Liliana, like, like by getting rid of Steve, it's going to put more pressure on them. Like, I'm not necessarily super worried about... So they definitely drew a win con here. I'm not really super worried about... Um, I think that by getting rid of Steve and losing card quality or cards, like, I'm dictating the pace of the game. And I'm making this Liliana a very real problem for my opponent. They definitely have Titan, so we're gonna we're gonna ult now. I think we just go three mountains versus the Greenlands. So now they kinda have to keep these green ones. And triple stone rain, okay. So we want our discard. I want this command because at least does something. And that's probably it. Well, yeah, I mean, you're right there, I guess. Yes, you are. So I don't want these fatal pushes. And I think I want my lightning bolts. Abrupt Decay hits Prismatic Omen, but that's pretty low impact, I think. The Maelstrom Pulse at least hits Titan, but I, I don't know if I have a better draw to get out than Titan. Like, if I have, want to bring something else in. Maybe Chandra is better than Maelstrom Pulse because Chandra at least deals two damage a turn. Like, I could definitely see keeping in Maelstrom Pulse just because it kills Titan. And Chandra's like a four drop, so it's not that good, but at least it's like another way to win. We're kind of at the point where, in my opinion, like both these cards suck and it's just which one sucks less. And I think the Chandra sucks less. When I've got three Terminates, four Thought Seizes, and three Lilianas. Yeah. Like, Maelstrom Pulse prevents them from winning the game, but it doesn't win me the game. They do usually bring in creatures, but the creatures are like Chameleon Colossus. Um, I think I've got a mulligan. Ravine's nice. Uh, we got a no-lander. At least we got a Tarmogoyf. We want like a discard spell. That's at least a discard spell. I don't even think they were playing Bayloth really anymore because like Bayloth's not even that good against Death Shadow because they just make their thing large enough. They make their creature large enough. Or the creatures are all huge. That's a good draw. Like I don't even think that Bayloth's that good in this deck. I can see P and Kieran Alar being good, but Bayloth against Death Shadow is just like the four life doesn't really matter. What is my opponent doing? So I guess this Tarmogoy is going to get bolted. 
but you got to play it. At least the next time we're going to be bigger. Swag Tusk. I guess I was more worried about Swag Tusk. Swag Tusk and Tracker are like the big problems. Wow, nothing. I think I just play this. Tick up on this swamp. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm gonna keep this swamp or discard this swamp because there's a chance that I did, that I want to go double green. I don't know how. Do, what did my opponent keep? Oh, they kept bail. Oh, right, let's speak of the devil. So I think I'm gonna chump block here because or they have the Bayloth that we were just shitting on so now they don't have lands so here's like the problem I can go like Tarmogoyf Terminate tick up how big will that make my goif? It's still not larger than this. I think I still want to go, like, terminate this, play Tarmogoyf, and tick up. Even if they have another Bayloth, I think, like, ultimating a Liliana is worth it. No, that's silly. I really don't want to tick down and get this Liliana Lightning Bolt. This is like a hard thing. I don't want I don't want to lose my my Liliana to a bolt. But if they had bolt, they would have bolted Tarmogoyf later in the game. Earlier in the game. So I think we're just gonna go edict. Play Goyf and then pass. I think we're already in the no bueno zone. Another Valakit. Summoner's Pact. So they're going to get Steve. They're going to get Steve or Wood Elves. Yeah, Wood Elves. So I think I'm just... How's it going, Kevin? I played Jun because I just wanted to play Hazret, to tell you the truth. And that's what that's kind of where we're at in our life. I don't think it's... I might terminate this, but I don't think it's worth terminating my end step. So, they go... They get a land. So, they don't have a land... They can't play Titan this turn. So I think it's worth just going here. Playing Scavenging Ooze. Ticking up. You love the team? I, I wanted to play that there. I'll attack. Play Scavenging Ooze. Tick up my Liliana. Like This is a very weak Terminate, but I, I just want to get... like They have to draw a land. Like There's no doubt they have Primeval Titan. But they have to draw a land here. And, like, let's hope we don't get again. Don't bail off me, bro. Oh, man, they got two. Yeah, I know, I know they have to pay for pack. They got to hit lands in, like, two draw steps. So I'm just going to let my Liliana die, I think. I think it's worth... Um, it pumps Goyf, and it's going to, like, let me attack for... I can eat... Two creatures, so I can attack for eight. So I hit Cinderblade. Yeah, so we're just going to do what I said. I'm going to eat two creatures. And then play Bob and just pray. Yes. So Scapeshift doesn't kill us. 
Primeval Titan basically kills us. How are you doing this morning, Kevin, over on the East Coast? Or West Coast, West Coast. You still haven't properly thanked me for, you know, us sending you that gift of a franchise quarterback for a second-round draft pick. Okay. This is just, like, super unfortunate here. How's it going, Ven? Look, it's two lands. Oh, they got the slaughter games in their deck. Or oh, that's fatal pushes. So now they just go one, two, three, four. We have Bob. Bob against Titan and Bayloth. Is that where we're at now? Or are they going to leave me with, like, scavenging news? I'm going to kill Bob. Then they're going to kill... They're just going right at my face. because Kevin's a hard-working son of a bitch. That's why he's awake. All right. So we're dead to a mountain. So I guess we attack with both. And then our opponent eats one of them. We brutality. Yeah, we're good. We're good here. Oh, what a guy, Kevin. What a guy. We're going to get around to Abzan at some point. I just wanted to play Jun to play with Hazaret. That's pretty much where we were at. All right, I think we're going to keep it all keep it all the same. Thirty-five viewers, guys. Thanks for showing up and thanks for hanging out. I appreciate you all being here. If you like what you see, hit the follow button. If you uh, want to always, you should also subscribe to my YouTube channel because you can always watch all of my stream archives there. Um, and what else was I going to say? If you guys need any Moto stuff, this is so bad. If you guys need any Moto stuff, you should check out Card Order. So I really I, like. I kind of want to keep this hand here. This is uh, match match four, Kevin. So like, I really want to keep this hand because I've got a discard spell into a Liliana. Like I think of the only I think this card's the only way it's gonna win me the game. The only problem is that my opponent's got Bayloths after sideboard. So this is like where I want to keep this, but I think like an adult decision is to mulligan. But we could also just go with, like, we need to get lucky to win this matchup anyways. And, like, these two cards are the tools to help win the matchup, I think. And at least I've got... I'm going to keep it. Like, and I've got cards to discard to Liliana. So, like, this totally might be loose, and I get that. But I think that I've got excess gas to discard to Liliana. I think that I need to stick this and have him not have Bailoff to win anyways. And we get to Inquisition a turn one play. So. Explore, try to escape ship. So I guess we just take Explore. Because Explore and Elder are basically the same thing. Except. Um, except one of them draws another card. That's a pretty good draw. Dude, Kevin, we're all about luck in this stream. Like we 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 completely oh what a what a joke. So I take Steve. I think I'm gonna take Steve. <laughs> yeah. So my opponent goes I take this, my opponent goes land Steve. So then they've got four cards in their hand. I go land, take up, they have three cards. They play a land, they have three cards, take up, they have two cards. But then they've got four lands in play. Alternatively, we can just discard this Bloodstained Mire and stay above 18. Yeah, I think I'm going to do this. 
We'll just like eliminate being lower than 18. That's kind of sucks my opponent drew that. Drew Steve, but like, you know. Their whole deck is either mana or bombs, so. That's in the green source that's pain free, which is nice. We did a great job of not dodging Bailoth in the last game. Okay, so they ditch a Valakit. 40 viewers, guys. Appreciate everybody choosing to hang out here on a Saturday. Let me get a... Wood Elves? Ooh, Wood Elves is pretty annoying. Because Wood Elves is like a ramp spell that's also going to make it so that I can't... It's going to be harder to... Uh, ult this Liliana, because they can keep this around. So I'm going to assume they drew that. I would like I would like a Tarmogoyf. Can I just draw a Tarmogoyf? Alright, that's not Tarmogoyf, but that's not bad. Alright, um... I guess, again, we'll ditch the Bloodstain Mire, because we're going to get an Overgrown Tomb with it anyways. Hazret's also where we want to be. Okay, so they ditched their escape shift. Like a coward. Then we're going to play this because, like, most of the time I like keeping a land in our hand, but I want to stay above eight. I guess I'm at 19, so they, they kill me anyway, or 18. But I want to, uh, with two, drawing two cards a turn, I still want to be able to attack with Hazret. We're going to let this happen. Hazard at one time. All right, Ranger Ring's not bad. So now I think we just go here. I probably just shock this shatter here. Or discard shock. And then I'll plus. And then attack my opponent. And at least we're at parity. Like, my opponent's at the point of the game where they have to draw lands and bombs to win. Oh, I don't want to do that. That's not good. Hour of Promise. Serves you right for being greedy and keeping Steve around. So now that we're going to be able to rage next turn, we actually might have a chance to win this game. We're in an incredible situation here. So he's going at Liliana. That's probably a good idea. <laughs> No, I'm not tired of Death Shadow. I just want to play other decks. I guess I'm tired of it in the fact that I want to do different things. So I guess you could say, you could call that being tired of it for sure. I, I definitely would not, like I do thoroughly enjoy playing Death Shadow and what it does. So I think I if I was playing at a tournament right now, I'm still playing Five Color Shadow. I'm interested in trying a version of Shadow that doesn't play Lingering Souls. Because we're now playing a second blue source that... Sideboard plan is just Snapcasters. My opponent should be sacking this, I think. That's not a bad draw. My opponent should definitely just be getting to six mana every turn. Okay, so they block Steve. So they're going to get two cards anyways. I think I'm just going to clear Steve out of the way. And I'm going to attack, put them on a one-turn clock. Like, again, we're, we're quote-unquote losing value here, but I think we're just going to go for the throat here. Because next turn, next turn, just the Raging Ravine is lethal, which is kind of cool. I guess I made a mistake in the fact, but he, then he'll just Liliana and kill my, kill my, uh, he'll Titan and kill my Liliana. All right, dude, one time. There's a land. 
No way. No way. At least it's a Titan. Oh, God. What a... Uh... God, dude, that is so frustrating. I lost you, mountain, 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 mountain. Oh, the salt! I'm so salty. How's my uh, how's my stream quality doing for everyone that's out there? I'm tweaking my my bit rate is tweaking is tweaking out a tad, but. I don't know if anybody else can see it. Uh, Static Bo, thank you very much. I appreciate your uh, appreciate the support there with the follow. All right, dude. This is this how we jumped him out, bro. Thought sees. All right. I think we're going to take the search for his contact because we can't really interact with anything here very profitably. Like, like we, can, we can fight this with Liliana, but I, don't, I just don't want him improving his draw step, getting incremental advantage over time, and then flipping it into a land that we can't do anything about. So we're playing against a Grixis control deck. So I think we just be mana efficient here and play Tarmogoyf. And next turn, I'll go like Inquisition Bob or go Liliana, depending on like what my opponent has for mana open. Dude, maybe if we were just an adult, Kev. So my opponent's definitely going to terminate this. So I'm going to attack first. And then I don't think I'm going to jam Liliana. I think we're going to start with a discard spell and try to try to resolve this Bob. All right, now we're just going to jam Liliana. And then we're going to discard our land. That seems like a very... I mean, that tells me they don't have a mana leak. But what a tenor, That's such a joke. What do you get for, like, winning the PTQ? Nice. All right, we'll start with this. So we know our opponent's got a command. We'll ditch land. Cruel ultimatum. I respect my opponent. Oh, this is stupid. This is stupid. I forgot how Kolagon's command worked. I was so excited about this cruel ultimatum. Ugh. I was so pumped about this cruel ultimatum that I was like, didn't just completely zone out on how Kolagon's command worked. Yeah, that was stupid. That is a punt there. We'll, we'll count that. We'll count that on the exclamation point punt train there. I was so amped that I was just like, forgot how that worked. So I should have, what I should have done is gone discard spell, then played Bob, and then ticked up Liliana. I just did that. I just sequenced that poorly. Which is my fault. We're probably winning this game if, that, if I would have sequenced correctly. But it happens. It happens a lot. Well, especially when you stream, like it's it's difficult. It can be difficult to, you know, keep everything straight. But Patriots fan always punting. I mean, if that leads to Super Bowl W's, then we can call that a punt, Kev. Don't even get into me about football right now. What is this? Electrizing? Okay. Probably hitting Liliana. Hazret should be gas if we can hit Hazret in this matchup. We need to make sure to like 
evaluate whether it's worth keeping a card in our hand for this Liliana when we go to plus it, because he can do like the cryptic command trick. I really like this stream decker thing that's been put in here now. EE -E on three. All right. Being, yes, I agree. Dude, my opponent is... My opponent's got it going on. I'm just going to main phase eat this... Eat this... Uh, Kolagon's command now. I should have... I, I was looking at the chat and I didn't fetch the end of my turn, which I should have definitely done. But... I totally, my opponent's got like some serious sauce going on here. They're just going to keep it in play too. So maybe I should have just fetched and kept the green mana open instead of eating immediately. Think twice, okay. Opt, okay. I just didn't want to play. I didn't want to, like, get into a, I guess, a tug-of-war battle there, Kev, which is what would have happened. But that's a pretty good draw. But, like, I, I didn't want to. So I'm big. When it comes to playing Magic, I'm really big on dictating, what, especially in the world of, like, I want to dictate how my opponent plays. And by sitting here and, like, eating this K command, like, I know that the easiest way I lose is, like, Snapcaster K command, so I just wanted to be like, this is how the game's going to go. Which, you know, might not be right. But that's just a bias that I have. Especially in the world of, like, Fatal Push, I don't think it's relevant to keep these things around. So we're going to run this Raging Ravine right into a... Um, right into a removal spell if they have it. But I doubt we're going to be able to go, like discard spell into Ravine at any point in this matchup. I would agree. I mean, Snapcaster Kolagon's command is, like, pretty powerful. God, one time. And we're just jamming. We're not... We have no... We're, we're just going right for this. Flashback thing twice. Okay. Come on, one time. They don't have it. Opt. God, this hazard is just going to end this game. They put a card on the bottom. Don't speak. Don't speak such negativity, Archmage. Logic not. What a joke. At least we had a good sweat. How much does cool ultimatum cost to cast? One, two, five, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That was pretty brutal. I think I'm going to cast... I might as well just cast Tarmogoyf, I guess. Nah, or I can just, like, make him deal with this ravine. They've got terminate, so they can snap terminate. Pretty easy. They can snap logic knot. It's kind of interesting. Me too. Yeah, dude, I'm totally cool with losing this match to a cruel ultimatum. I think we're just going to be mana efficient. We're just going to use all of our mana and attack with this. We haven't played a land yet, so even if my opponent bounces it, I can play it again. Like, it's going to, it's five here. So, I mean, this is, this is a very good clock, but there are so many ways that we lose this match right now that at least we get better. We get better after sideboard for sure.
one time is enough. There's just too much, like two times is just too much savagery. Yeah, I'm totally cool with losing a game to a cryptic command. Losing a game to a, uh, whatever it is. A, uh, can't even think. Losing a game to Cruel Ultimatum. Alright, there's a crypt command. Hey, how's it going, Marcus? Uh, uh, X, -I -L -E -F -I, thank you for the follow. I, I don't know if you're still in the chat. If, sorry if I mispronounced your name. Oh, one time. One time. God. We're going to keep playing. We're going to let my opponent have their fun here. It's happening. I'm totally okay with this. I am okay. We're going to keep playing here. We're going to let our opponent do their thing. Like, we're going to let our opponent live the dream. I'm sure that my opponent is having a ridiculous amount of fun on their side. And, I, oh, yeah. This is awesome. And it gets, oh, my God, the hits just keep on coming. I'm not, like, this is awesome. Just snap cruel ultimatum. My opponent sends a smiley face. This is great. Oh my god. Oh, I just got triple cruel ultimatum. This is. This is how it was meant to be. No, Kevin, we're so far behind. I'm not even mad. Like. Oh, there's a hazard on top. I'm happy that happened. Okay, so we want discard. We want graveyard shenanigans. We want this guy. We want this one here. I'm going to assume that, like, all of our removal is garbage. Um, we want this command. Um, we probably... So it's Terminate better than Lightning Bolt. We're probably afraid of, like, a Tassiger or something like that. So Tassiger, Scare of God. So I think we're going to go like this. I'm not afraid of Tasker enough. I guess Maelstrom Pulse is probably better than Terminate because they might board in a couple of, like... They might board in some, uh, whatever it is. Some cre They might... Oh, God, I can't even think. They might board in, like, Planeswalkers. I'm totally cool. By the way, isn't Mr. Count Wafatapo or one of his... I don't know if it is or not. But we got we got some game here in the sideboard. All right. So I lost. I again, we probably lost that game due to my own fault back there. So in game one, like I think if we sequence correctly, we beat him. All right, we're just gonna take fatal push because we're gonna get a draw out of our Bob. Like he's gonna be able to electrolyze it, but we're gonna get a card back, which makes the two for one like not as bad. I would agree, Kevin. Like all the grindy matchups are just much better for if you like if you have lingering souls. Like that's that's what it's all about. So we're gonna get overgrown tomb here. And then hopefully we get a card out of this at least. Hopefully my opponent didn't draw like a lightning bolt or something like that. Is 
Is this the Grixis deck here? So I drew Terminate. Yeah, there it is. Holy shnikes. Alright, Stomping Ground is good. We're going to just play Liliana. So do we want to play We want to get Liliana in here. Because Liliana is going to win us the game. And then we're going up. For one of Waffle's accounts. Guillaume Waffle Tapa. Look at this, dude. We have a Liliana combo deck going on here. Okay, so we're going to discard this Pulse. And we're going up with this. We discarded Think Twice, combo deck. You guys are all, you guys are a little all in the PTQ. I guess we're getting a good amount of viewers. I was, I was worried about how many viewers I was going to get because of the uh, SCG in the, but I guess the World Magic Cup's over. Which one's he getting? Which one is my opponent getting here? Why else would I be up at 7 a.m.? Yep. You guys are all on the West Coast. How'd that go for you? It was brutal, yeah. I think you could get away streaming against the, um, the World Magic Cup if you were doing a different format. But also, like, Team Unified Standard's kind of garbage. So maybe you could get away with it. Another Electrolyze. Okay. Hopefully we hit a land. If we hit a land, I can go like double bob. But it might be worth just... I don't know. I don't know if it's worth... It might be worth commanding, returning bob, having a discard a card in our main phase. So let's just telegraph either I don't have another land or spell snare. I think this is just like screaming I have a spell snare. So I think I'm just going to like get Bob back, go here. Land our two for one, go up with our planeswalker, and then just, just threaten to ult this Liliana. We discard land. So they did have another land. They were just playing a land that I knew. So they don't have Fatal Push. They don't have Thought Scour? Opt, oh, okay. I guess I could have I guess I could have jammed into the opt. Yeah, that was a mistake. So they put a card on the bottom. Opponent does not play a land. So let's get Bob going on first. We're going to get counterbalance probably. I kind of want to get a basic just because I want to preserve my life total because I want to draw a bunch of cards off this bomb. Is this, is this the Scarab G right here? No. Okay, so we're drawing a card. Scavenging news. Burden catacombs. All right, let's get in here. This seems like my opponent like has like cryptic command opt or maybe like think twice mana leak up here. They're definitely trying to recoup some card advantage. The question is, do I offer up Liliana the Last Hope? What do I offer up to a counter spell here? I don't really want to play, like, another... I don't want to go, like, double two-drop, because my opponent has Engineered Explosives, and it's just all over.
I guess I should have played like so. I'm gonna. I actually I've changed my mind. I'm going to play scavenging ooze, and if my opponent ex AEs us, I guess I don't know. Because this is like if I play both of these, I should have played my scavenging ooze first. Counter counter return. All right, now we're just gonna play Liliana here. Yeah, and again, I'm going to get a basic. We're just going to, like, we're just going to uh, preserve our life total here because I don't want to get burned out. Yeah, Shota is a monster. Yeah, so we, get, we pegged the opt. My opponent put a card on the bottom. Need some more Kofefe. Well, things kind of worked out, right? God, don't play, don't play a scarab, God. He's tapping five mana. This is an explosives. My opponent plays EE. I'm just 100% ticking this thing down. Getting back another bob. We're just double bobbing him. Dude, Shota is, Shota is a is a god amongst men. So I'm not really confident about getting this thing back here. So I think I'm just going to minus two, get back a Bob, and then cast Bob Bob. I am, I am not a good enough limited player to give you some good advice there. So I'm going to play this Scavenging Ooze because now if my opponent's got Snap Electrolyze, it makes that a little worse. Like, I can get, I can, like, eat a card and then play Bob and play a tap land. So here comes Snapcaster. I think twice. Okay. Play Bob, play a tap land. This is a grind. Oh, no. Turn off auto yields. Yeah. Dude, Shout says he's a he's a man he's a man amongst boys. We're up to almost forty people. I appreciate everybody coming in and hanging out. I hope I hope everyone's having a great Saturday here. We're we're talking about a little bit of modern, a little bit of uh a little bit of Jun, a little bit of how crappy everybody's sealed pools are on this fantastic day. Yeah, like we're, this Liliana is keeping us in the game, but we're definitely in a little bit of trouble. This seems like, I think my opponent's, my opponent's been playing where they have an EE. Yeah, so EE for two. So my opponent's going to be able to um, blow up both of these. But then we're going to tick Liliana up and play another Bob. I'm going to eat, like, I guess we're just going to eat a Cryptic Command at this point. My opponent's got two mana. It doesn't really matter what we eat because my opponent's really redundant. Exactly, Kevin. That's, that, that's how you do it. Play another one. Tick up. Oh, they have a spell snare. I think I'm going to... I don't think I want to roll this down. I think I want to keep this in play. Because if I just roll this down, he's got a removal spell and kills my Bob, then, like, the game's pretty much over. I don't think we can afford to just... Ditch this, get a Bob back, and what we need is we need like a Hazret, we need a Colagon's command, we need Hazret K command, be great. A Veil would be great. Spellbomb's not bad, so let's start by casting this. We've all 
been trained better than you, and you hope to get struck by lightning, and you will <laughs> happen to still be standing, or we're getting cruel ultimated. Yeah, sure. If I get cruel ultimated, this is this is all good. Counter draw. That is assertive. So again, we're gonna play Bob. We're gonna get Bob back. You made it to the questionable choices during the game. You made too many for playing the grind game. I can deck that out grinds you. I I agree, but I don't think that I. I guess now a cruel ultimatum just mocks up the game. Snapcaster. Oh, now he electrolyzes and goes one and one. We also just didn't really get a beat down. I mean, I guess I could have gotten this Tarmogoyf back. Maybe that was the better play to get Goyf. But now we're just like, we're wicked dead. Oh, yes. All right, so we might as well go two modes here. Minus two, minus two. And then we'll go here. Kill this Snapcaster Mage. At least we're going to get something out of this, probably. To fail. He's got an explosives left over. Okay, so. I mean, they had a lot of draws that were pretty disgusting. And what, maybe what, what a, like, Al Contrapa, Al Crunch, I can't even pronounce his name, but maybe, like, what he was talking about. Well, that Ravine's a good draw. Oh, am I getting commanded? He drew a K command? God, that's just... Vomit inducing. Um, and he gets back Snapcaster Mage. All right, we're good here. We don't need to play against Snap K Command. All right, let's jump back into another league. I'm gonna go get refill my coffee. So we went two and three after starting two and zero. Oh, we were like very promising, but it did not work out. So let me go view this deck here. Maybe get some more coffee, and then I'll be right back. Let's get back into it. So there was, there was like, I guess with what he was talking about, there was, there was times where I could have adjusted my line of play to, uh, I could have adjusted my line of play to play more aggressively. But I think I was just, I guess I was just trying to keep pace with him and like keeping pace with that deck probably isn't how I win. So maybe that was right. Maybe I was just having too much fun recurring my Dark Confidants. I definitely threw game one. Game one, like, I don't think I could have won game... Maybe I could have won game two. It was close. I threw game one, like, hard. The last up was gas, though. Nickel Bola 77. Okay. All right, I think we're going to keep this. We'll draw... We'll draw green. Well, no, I can't keep this. Well, so I've got Terminate on two to interact. Yeah, I guess I'll keep this. Like, Colagon's Command's decent against a combo deck. To make the discard card. Liliana's good. I wouldn't keep this if I was on the draw. But I guess we'll keep it on the play. Yeah, we're playing it today. I just wanted to play, so I had like a really hard week of work, and I wanted to play something that was like not too difficult to play, and that was just uh, where you Colagon's commanded here. Or, so we're playing, it's probably playing against Grixis Death Shadow. I wanted to play a deck that was fairly easy to play and was fun, just because like I had a crap work, crap week of work all this week, so I wanted to do something cool. Let's hope that he does not have. 
a removal spell. I can't imagine Grixis Death Shadow being a very good matchup for this deck. I am a, uh, I'm a consultant for industrial hygiene. I work on occupational health and safety. So I was like this week, for example, God, don't angler me. This op's not bad. He's going to try to find, this, this, this makes me think that he doesn't have a way to kill this um, Bob. Yeah, there we go. So he's going to take Cake Man probably. Cake Man, unless he has a Delve card and he might take Terminate. Okay. So he doesn't have a Delve card. Right. That was a great draw. So we're gonna just take we're gonna ditch this abrupt K because we can't cast it. Then we're gonna poke him for two. We do turn on his death shadow here, but I would assume that my opponent had another way to turn it on. But yeah, I'm industrial hygienist. So like this week, um I'm consulting for a company. Oh, this is a K command? They must not have another land. But I'm consulting for a company that uh that is working at the Martin Luther King Jr. building. So what is this? Yes, yep. This is a K command for sure. So he did, he's going to hit Bob probably. Okay. Oh, he kept Bob in play? Oh my god. We'll ditch this land. This makes so hazard it's not a live draw. Yeah, my opponent is not happy. Uh, casting Kologon's command is pretty annoying because, like, casting K command is annoying because there's so many different options that you can have. Like, when it gets up there big, I wish that I wish that Moto made things larger. Okay, opponent cycles. Another command here, or they have their own Liliana? Okay. Opponent's super dead. I'm not going to edict this. I'm not going to terminate this, because I just want to get up cards of my opponent. Burn Catacombs, Tarmogoyf. Yeah, I just want to I just want to be up cards of my opponent. Just milk this Liliana for all it's worth. And then we just fetch shock, play Tarmogoyf. Yeah. All right. So in this matchup, so we definitely don't want this here a lightning bolt. I don't think we want Kolagon's command either. It just doesn't kill anything, and it's too slow. Like I don't, I don't like this card in Death Shadow Mirrors. So I think I do want. Um, and then I think I want to discard, get rid of some amount of Inquisitions. Like, I could see cutting a lot of Inquisitions and bringing in more Thought Seizes to hit the, uh, whatever it is, to hit, um, Delve Creatures. No, you can do whatever you want in the chat. I mean, as long as you act like an adult, I don't really care. I think I want to go, like, something like this. And then probably, like, here to just be able to, like, handle some more Delve Creatures. Like, these cards, I just don't want them because they don't kill Delve Creatures. I think we want these because they deal with Delve Creatures. Is this somebody's, uh, Iconic Masters deck here? Is this your, like, is this your Iconic Masters thing, Marcus? Is it what is it? Is it a is it the iconic masters thing? It looks all right. I think this is what I want to do here. I don't think I don't really want to bring in Chandra because like, I don't want to bring in a four mana card that gets stubbed. Yeah, it looks good. I think Maelstrom pulls. I think I just want to be better against Delve cards. So maybe I can cut like a couple pushes. I probably don't need four fatal pushes now that I think about it.
I guess I want this card. I guess I can keep one K command in because it's like I don't want to bring this in because it's like main phase gets stubbed. I don't need all these pushes. Yeah, I guess this is what we'll do. And this also is going to help me tax his planeswalkers, which is going to be important. I really don't know how to sideboard this matchup very well, I think. I don't think this is a good matchup. Like, I, I don't think I'm excited to play this Death Shadow deck here. I don't want to play decks. I don't want to play cards that have creatures that are bigger than Tarmoglyph. Yeah, we're going to keep this. We're just not going to mulligan in this matchup if we can get away with it. And I don't want to play against Snapcaster Mage or Kologon's Command. Oh, it shocks. Nope, no plays. All right. These are all pretty good. So he doesn't have any way to turn on this young pyromancer, so I'm not super worried about that. I would rather him play this next turn. I think I'm gonna play I think I'm gonna take his Jace. Thought sees his Liliana. And then hopefully so my opponent then get some value out of this here. I don't really want this Jace to deal with this. I think this is what we're gonna take. And then we'll take Liliana. Scalding Tarn, Young Pyromancer. Now this all could blow up in my face if they find a way to make a token out of this. Alright, that's not a bad draw. This makes it so that my Lilianas can trade for each one of his creatures. Like, I'll go like, Liliana Edict... He plays probably plays Death Shadow. Eats my Liliana. Then I go Liliana Edict again. Will be worst case scenarios. My opponent drew like a stub. A stub or a cantrip's bad. Twelve. Didn't shock. This means they drew some form of interaction. Either like a snap. Well, if they had a snapcaster, they would have they would have drawn it. They would have played it right there. Okay, they're just not looking looking to take it easy. And again, we're just going to run Liliana right into this thing. If this is a stub, it's a stub. We're going to make our opponent have it. Yeah, it's been a rough, rough day for him, it sounds like. So stub or cantrip, we're pretty dead here, I think. Because I need my Lilianas to trade with these two creatures. Nope, they did sack it. Okay. So my opponent's flooding out a little bit, it looks like. If my opponent plays their own Liliana, I might... Okay, so there's... Here come the 1-1s. One Cycle Street Wraith. So you have Watery Grave X. We have another cantrip. And they drew Inquisition, which means they probably take... They probably take Bob. They took Koi. Okay. So the last card in hand is Watery Grave, I believe. So now I think I just go Tap Land, Dark Confidant, uh, Tap Land, Dark Confidant, go. Yeah, what's the Watery Grave? And I think, I don't even think I can trade my Bob off here. I think I've got to take eight and then look to get around with these, with like the Lilianas, try to figure out how to get through, slog through this crap. One, two, they're all going at me. That's going there. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to take this. Yeah, I think we're just going to. We're going to take four, go to nine, and then look to try to find a way to directly hit this young power. Because if we hit this young pyromancer, we're in good shape, I think. Teamer, battle rage, okay. So, 
two. It's a good thing we didn't block here then. So we go seven. We need like a scavenging ooze. We do a land, which is good. We do two land, which is bad. Okay, so now we're in trouble. I think we're just gonna go here. We're just gonna make him edict a creature. Now we're probably trading with the young pyromancer if we get a chance to. And then I'll just play this tap land. No, we don't have Olivia. Maybe I should maybe I should bring in like Pyroclasm after sideboard. Yes. Hazard's where we're where we're at today. Okay, so that kills us probably. Yeah, we don't have an out after that. Okay. So we got Pyromancered. Which I don't think we're... I, like, I don't really want to bring in Pyroclasm. That would have been a... Nah, I still would have done it. I don't really want to bring in Pyroclasm. Be, or, like, Code Selects Return, because it's just so narrow. Like, we've got two pushes, three Terminates, a Decay, Command, Maelstrom, Pulse. Like, I don't think I want to change anything. Like, I think, I think bringing in, like, more removals being, like, a little results-oriented... That can be that can be our I can buy that. Maybe I want to shave like one of these and one of these. Cause I just think all my maybe this Colagon's command I can see shaving this Colagon's command in one of these. And then just bring in the pushes. Yeah, we'll go for this. I think that the, like I could keep. I don't know. I don't know, it's difficult. Maybe I can cut some discard, I'm not sure. This hand's a bit slow. You think so? I think he, I think he should be shaving street rates, but he kept his street rates in, which is weird. I don't think we can keep this. Yeah, we'll keep this hand. Let's see if we can get a land on top. We have a land on top. This hand's pretty good. We're taking some damage. Okay, so we had Thoughtsies, Thoughtsies, Tasker, Stub, Opt, Command. I think we're going to take Tasker. So he goes Thoughtsies, takes something. He probably takes Bob, because he knows I have a land on top. So I'd assume he's taking Bob. So I, I guess I really don't want to deal with this Tasker. But this Colagon's command is going to be a problem. Maybe I just take Opt because, like, my opponent's hand's pretty anemic without Opt. And let him just Thought Seize my hand away, play a threat next turn, and hopefully ride that to victory. I think I'm going to take Opt. Like, all these are kind of meh. But I guess Opt, one, two, three. He needs another land, it's four. No, I'm going to take Tassiger. Make it so that to at least turn four until he can play that. I'm just going to thought seize us more than likely. MTGO's die. Yeah. It's a quality program. I assume he takes Bob. And this is why I, I feel like I'm on the ropes here a little bit. But that's just because I'm, I'm playing just a purely worse mid-range deck. Like, my opponent's deck is just, I think, better... And even the Death Shadow decks. I think the Death Shadow decks are just better at every single metric than these mid-range decks here. Like these Jund and Abzan decks. I think they just do all that stuff, but they just do everything a little better. All right, opponent misses the land drop. So we're going to go... We're going to take Angler... I think it's I think it's true. I guess Abzan. So I think it's true with Abzan because I just think Abzan's slow. Like if you can get a format, like if we can get to a format. Oh, I should have taken. I guess I wasn't even thinking there. We were talking. I should have taken push. Yeah. Well, I guess he would have cast. I could have. I could have gone like push eat his graveyard. We were. I was just like 
zoned out there talking. My thought sees. Yeah, I should have I should have thought sees differently, but I was I was chatting it up and I just missed it. Okay, we drew land, which is a little sad, but it is what it is. I just yeah, I don't know. I just think I actually don't think so. But then against humans, like the Jundex, oh, he's got stub up too. So yeah, this is like where it's just game over. My opponent's threats are just, my opponent's deck is just so much leaner than mine. And I probably made a mistake with how I fetched here or with how I uh, sequenced. My opponent's deck is just so much leaner than all these decks here. So that's it. Yeah, we're dead. Because he goes attacks. I guess I could have had one more draw step if he doesn't draw a land. But if he draws a land, then I'm dead. So maybe I maybe I did something poorly, but I just think that these Death Shadow decks do everything that these mid range decks do, just a little across the board, pretty much just better. Like even against the little creature decks, where Death Shadow loses value and makes it up with Teamer Battle Rage. The DMK King. All right, we're gonna ship this. And we'll keep this. This thing's pretty good. That's why I was worried. Like, I don't even think, like, uh, we don't want this. I think we're going to lead off on the swamp here. Like, I think Jund Death Shadow is favored heads up against Jund. Um, probably just take, we we'll probably just take his Accelerant. I think I'm just going to take his Accelerant. Because now he can't cast Voice. He can pass my Tarmogoyf, but right now I have the mana advantage, so maybe I can, like, out-ooze him a little bit. Oh, he drew a Flight of Strand. That's rough. All right, so Dark Confidant should take me to the Promised Land here. I think I'm going to play... I guess which is better, Tarmogoyf or Scavenging Ooze? I guess I want my Ooze to fight his Ooze, and I'm going to be drawing more cards and drawing removal, hopefully. So I think I'm actually going to run my Tarmogoyf out here. I think I'm just going to get a... I'm going to get Overgrown Tomb and then play Goyf. I actually... I don't think the card selection is where you want to be because I think that the cantrips are very poor in Modern. I just think when it comes to being, like, an 18-land redundant deck with better threats... Like, they all pretty much have the same answers. Like, you, everybody, like everybody's playing Fatal Bush, which is the best. Like, all the decks are the same. Um, and you have more disruption. You're just, like, the Death Shadow deck will lose to itself a little more when it doesn't draw the lands. But I think that the deck just basically does everything better. Like, where, where these 24 land decks do are better than the Jun decks, the Death Shadow decks are, is against, like... Blue white control and death and taxes, where they're affecting your mana base. Yeah, that's why, like, I prefer to play Jun Death Shadow over Grixis Death Shadow because I don't really want a hand where I've got two lands, a Thought Seize, two Serum Visions, a Street Wraith, and a Death Shadow because I don't really know what my game plan is. I would much rather have, like, land, bobble, thought seize, thought seize, land, tarmogoyf, death shadow. Because then it's like, I have a clear game plan. I know what my deck's trying to do. Alright, so I think I'm going to shock, get an overgrown tomb, play tarmogoyf. Hopefully this gets path. I'll get a basic forest. This will probably get me stomping ground. I just want as much green mana as possible. Because I think... I think winning the ooze battle is going to be a big game in this matchup. And, like, voice is a real problem against decks like this. The Death Shadow decks, at least Jun Death Shadow, doesn't really care about voice of resurgence because you can just ignore it. You can just get larger than it, beat over the top, 
Or you just team or battle rage land the game for you. That's a whole different conversation. You can data mine anything. This is gas right here. This is what I'm talking about. We are going to untap and play it with four mana. Oh, I meant to click the... I talked about the forest. Talked about the forest. We got the swamp. Oh, things out with our voice. All right, we're going to go get stomping ground and then play Bob voice resurgence. That's another problem that you have when you like stream. You're, you'll you're, you'll talk about your plays, and then you'll move on to a different topic, and you'll just like whoop, gone. So I think I'm gonna stream the challenge next weekend, and I'll probably ch engage with the chat a lot less. But when you go back to data mining, like Magic Online has all this data. They've got it all. They just don't show it. We're going to take two. Truex is also pressing that to Yeah. I mean, you're right there. I have no idea how to say your name, but you, you, you have a point. Hashtag Nilla, what's going on? How you doing this morning, my friend? This is a knight that's kind of going to suck. Eternal Witness for Path. That's gross. At least we're going to get another card out of this. Hopefully we hit a discard spell. All right. Kolagon's command's pretty good. Another scavenging is good. These voices are going to be pretty... They're going to be annoying, for sure. So I think I'm going to go... Shoot, hit, shoot, discard, attack for five, play a tap land. I think that's what we're doing here. We're going to go here, here. Hopefully we get a spell from our opponent. I'm going to eat this bird, crack for five, play a tap land. Watching the GC stream, it has some production issues. Well, it's the first time they've ever tried to do anything like that, right? Okay, so they ditched their own ooze. That is surprising. I wonder what they're going to path here. If they're going to path Bob or ooze. They probably should path Bob, even though the ooze threatens to get out of control. 35 viewers, guys. Again, I appreciate you guys choosing to hang out here on your morning. What is this, another Eternal Witness? Oh, ramen up. Ramen up. God, the value. Oh, so there's not actual issue. It's just like quality control is not good. Well, that's not necessarily true. Like, when, like, ooze can become card advantage if my opponent has to block with it every single turn, you know? Like, ooze just being able to, like, continually lean on your opponent and putting your opponent in the abyss is card advantage. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if their decision is right or not, but I think it's got merit. Again, we're just going to ignore this voice. This voice is going to... This voice is going to, like... We don't want to interact with this card. I think that's how we lose. I could have bolted upstairs, put more pressure on them. But I think just controlling the battlefield, having an ooze with three activations up, is just... Is where we want to be. I'm going to eat this flooded strand right now. Because I don't want my opponent to play a Ramanog Excavator and just get some value out of it. I think it's worth losing a point on the ooze because we just have so much mana. Yeah. 
what you think, it's okay. So the opponent's last card's voice. These voices are going to get problematic. Like, I'm probably going to block. My opponent should have... I, I believe my opponent should attack with their voice. Opponent should attack, I think. I think the token's worth more than the bear. Especially when you have another one to mess with my, like, main phase stuff. Oh, that's right. You're right there. I didn't think about that one. Take me the promised land, Bob. Reveal the land. Interrupt, okay? So my attacking with this scavenging ooze. We can go one. So if I attack with scavenging ooze, and my opponent throws everything in front of it, okay? I can decay, eat, eat, and then we're facing against a couple voice tokens. Because, like, they put everything in front of it. That's seven power. I decay one. To probably decay the kitchen finks. So there's four power. Then I eat two things. Yeah, I think we're attacking. Like, I think I'm okay with this race here. The only thing I'm kind of worried about is if my opponent hits, like, a collected company. I think I'm just going to decay on my turn. Okay. So we're going to put this last. Abrupt decay this. Eat it. Eat the Genos. So this is five. My opponent's got two bears. And again, this scavenging ooze is gonna create card advantage. Like, like this scavenging ooze here is just gonna put them in the abyss. To be fair, Geno's is a much better. <laughs> So we got three points here. This scavenging is just going to put them in the abyss. So again, this is like card advantage here in a different form. Each one of these are. Like scavenging is just leaning on my opponent. If you guys want to see more of my streams, I always archive them on my YouTube channel, which is below. So... You should check that out. I'm looking to get into a wider variety of modern decks. Currently, I only stream Jun Death Shadow, Grixis Death Shadow, Eldrazian Taxes, and Jun. I want to move into, like, a lot of them. I need to, like, get a little bit more, um, more money, or I need to have more views in order to, like, get a little more value allowing them from the card hoarder so I can, so I can play decks like Jeskai and Eldrazi Tron. I can get away with Jun because I own Jun Death Shadow, so I can supplement the deck with my collection. You know what? You aren't modern leader, legal, Nilla. So I'd like a removal spell. Okay. Oh, I have the Google Alerts up. So I think I'm going to throw this off just to see what's up. And then I'm probably, like, if my opponent plays a, uh, like, if this is a collected company or a removal spell, yeah, it's, it's got to be a company. Ghost Quarter themselves. I think that I wanted to just keep the Bob alive because of, like, my plan. I was going to be able to gain at least a bunch of life. Spell color, okay. So let's tap appropriately. I think I just want, I think I have a priority. I just want to keep this thing around. I think like these two in conjunction with each other 
is going to win me the long game. So now we're coming in with our 7-7. Opponent is in the abyss. I actually think I'm going to eat I'm going to eat both my opponent's lands be both my opponent's lands that do anything before they untap just because I don't want my opponent to top deck an ex excavator and be able to get any value out of this. As a stream quality for everyone that's watching here, my bitrate just went a little bit nuts. I want to make sure that we're good here. I could be playing conservatively. Like That's something that I do as a player from time to time. I play a little too conservatively and it gets me in trouble. I'm going to run to the bathroom while we're sideboarding here. So I'll be right back. good okay all right so against this deck i want collective brutality i want to look on the last hope i want close Lex return i want maelstrom pulse i think i want chandra because they're just not gonna well no because this isn't very good on the battlefield i don't want veils liliana the veil is god awful against voice resurgence um i probably can ditch like i probably shouldn't have i probably can just straight up switch these iok's for thought seizes <laughs> Marcus MTG, thank you very much. If we win some chests today, we'll be opening them up for you. I want all of my sweeper effects. So I probably can ditch like Inquisitions. Um, Hazard's probably not great, but again, it might get into a position where like void, scavenging his last game, you just lean on the opponent and they have to chump block it. Um, I think I would rather have some Graveyard Hate than Culligan's Commands. And I probably can ditch one more Thoughtseize for this. Well, there's there's a couple really important cards I want to hit with Thoughtseize. Like I want to hit I basically just want to hit Eternal Witness and Collecting Company. Okay, so the DM King here. Yeah, this hand's this hand's pretty good. We're just gonna work on getting our green sources, lead off with a Thoughtseize. We could get run over by, like, if my opponent's got a hand that can take advantage of a Bird of Paradise on one. Or an Oval Hierarch. We, didn't, we definitely need to maneuver this game to a position where scavengers can take over. So what do you guys think about just for the rest of the December, just mono Christmas music on my stream? All right, my opponent savages me here with a with a, whatever it is, then I'll then I'll deal with it. I know, dude. We got all kinds of value here with our subscriber. Don't savage me. Bro, with a path. So I, I used to play Naya Company. That was kind of like my first modern deck. Yeah, we're going to pulse that thing. And I found that I always had to, like, I couldn't beat 
But he should attack with Noble Hierarch. Just offer the trade, dude. Don't give me give me an option to be a moron. Like Boros Aggro. It happens to the best of us, man. Uh, corrupted brutality. Okay, so now we're just gonna pulse. We're gonna get a basic, uh, basic forest. Here, we're gonna preserve our life total. And again, we just want to maneuver this game to where we draw as many cards with Dark Confidant as possible. Dude, we're just we're talking about we're talking about respectable Christmas music. I'm thinking like some James Taylor. I don't want any of that like. Mariah Carey is like okay if you're feeling it, but besides that, she can be kind of obnoxious. Like I'm thinking James Taylor. We got some old time music, some respectable, some respectable shit. She and him is good. What do you mean? Oh, look at that. MTG bot coming in with with the clutch talks here. So again, I think I'm going to just brutality. Well, I'm definitely going to brutality. Probably escalate it. Probably discard, discarding a black leaf cliffs. I might just like remote it to tell you the truth. Like I might just go like ditch both of these black leaf cliffs. Just go like here, kind of harass my opponent's mana a little bit. What could they have though? There's probably like I don't. I've got seven cards. I don't need these lands. I want to make a land drop every turn, but I don't like necessarily need to. So I think I'm just gonna gain. I'm gonna go all. Th I guess they had an instant resource. They would have company on my turn. So I'm gonna go here. And I'm just going to gain life. I think these lands are worth more than doing this. And I don't really care about this Finx. I guess I could Brutality the Finx next turn. Cutting off his mana base doesn't sound that important. All right, I can buy that. Dude, Michael Buble is good. I kind of want to kill this next turn and then um, eat it with Finx. Eat it with a ooze. I think that's I think that's our game plan here. And then we're gonna just play this guy tapped. Well, actually, I guess I'll do it without, when it's on the stat. Eat a horizon canopy or something like that. I do think I'm gonna all three because I'm pretty sure like I don't know black leap quests two through three are pretty useless. Gavney Township, we're in some trouble now. That is bad. This right here, Gavney Township plus Kitchen Finks is a bona fide combo. Yeah, I can eat the Finks with a persistent the stack. The only problem is, is if my opponent uses any mana. I need to, I need to like, hope that my opponent... Now we're in, we're in trouble now, though. This Gavney Township, man, is, is a problem. Let's go eat scavenging news from my opponent. I just need a removal spell, you know, and I'll be okay. But So I guess I can double brutality the things. So then this goes, gets me basic swamp. So I go like here, here. Okay, so let's go escalate with two modes. Minus two, minus two, gain two life cast. Opponent Township. Pretty bad because, like, I can still do my play, but yeah, that's that's not good. We need to definitely get rid of this thing at some point. So we're gonna do this again. Escalate with two modes, minus two, minus two, gain and drain. Alright, 
persist. We'll eat this thing on the stack. And then we're not blocking with this scavenging ooze. So we are going in hot. We are, we're in trouble now. If we find a way to hit this spell queller though, we're in, we're in halfway decent shape. Cause even then we just go like hit the spell queller, come down brutality, one of these. Then hopefully we can gain, we can gain two more life. Yeah, we have six here. Hang on one second, I just gotta. Okay, sweet Bob. So Liliana, the last hope. So we can gain, we can go Liliana, the last hope on this. I don't really think it matters though, because Last Hope here makes us two. I gotta turn off my Google stuff. Last Hope on this makes us one power. Then they've got two in the air here. They didn't have four in the air. So I think I kind of have to attack. Yeah, I needed a way to remove this to get this brutality down. Because if we had this brutality down, we'd hit this and this and we'd be good. Yeah, I think we're dead because we only have one creature to eat, right? I guess how we win, two, three, four. No, because it goes to four anyways, so yeah, we can see. OP's got it. And Township, man, that Township's gas. Like, Township will do it to you. All right, I don't think we're changing anything again. I think we want all of our removals good. Um... Maybe on the play we want this Chandra more. Like maybe we can ditch a Chandra for a thoughts he's on the play. I can buy that. Yeah, we'll go like this. We'll get a little bigger. A little more aggro. Just get try to accrue just a little bit more. Like Chandra's gonna be able to win the game. We just need to get there. So. I like your analysis of the game, Mez Mezkilla. Uh, yeah, we'll keep this. We'll keep this. It's good. I think I'm going to lead off with Black Leaf Cliffs because I don't think... Like, there's a really low chance I'm pyroclasing on two. And, um... But I guess leading off, eh, what am I doing? I guess we'll just go like this. My opponent, like, if I lead off with Black Leaf Cliffs, my opponent doesn't play a one drop, and I draw, like, a Dark Confidant, then I'm super punished. Yeah, see, if we'd have done that, that would have been real bad. Absent guy finally coming to the dang side. You know, it's, I'm just playing, I'm just playing, I wanted to play with, basically I wanted to play with Hazret. That's kind of what I wanted to do. So, what do I want to do with my life? He's probably got to have a voice. I'm assuming he's got a voice of resurgence. So I guess we're going to wait and I'll brutality the voice and then check out his hand, hopefully hit a company. Oh, I got locked up on my rug here. <laughs> Um, Mezkilla, Mezkilla, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Thank you for, uh, the follow. I appreciate all of your support. So yeah, I'm looking to make some improvements to the stream after the new year. I'm getting a second cam, I'm getting a new camera, so I have a better view on me. Um, I'm getting a, whatever I was going to say, I'm getting a nice, gosh, I can't think. Um, the only one thing that would be bad is blood break. This is the one thing that would be bad about. She validates most of their four drops. Yep. Oh, 
Wow, my opponent's just like not doing anything. Liliana the Last Hope. Okay. Now I think I'm going to Brutality. But I guess if I Brutality, I can just, like if he Spellcrawlers it, I can just bolt the Spellcrawler. So I guess we'll just pass again. This is a weird game. <laughs> Delicious waffles. Delicious waffles with a hot take. This is my favorite card in all of Magic, I think. Knight of the Reliquary. I guess we're going to terminate it because we could hit, like, whatever it is from them. Like, Retreat to Korra Helm, we could hit with Abrupt Decay. Oh, no, we don't want to Pyroplasm. We're going to Brutality now. And then I'm going to play a Tapped Overgrown Tomb. It was a 4-4. You couldn't bolt it, right? No, you double company and an eternal witness. This game is going to get difficult. If I'm going to win this game, I think it's going to be on the back of this pyroclasm. Kalidus? I think Kalidus is like pretty hit or miss. Like, I'm not too excited about playing a 4-3. Yeah, this, is, this game is going to get difficult here. On a Coco, so I guess I should turn off my auto yields. Yeah, Bob would have been, would have been nice. Okay, so... I'm going to decay this on my end step here. I guess I should tap this thing here. The Raging Ravine. No, because I want to leave. I guess I should use the Raging Ravine I need, so we're going to go blank. Decay that thing. What did my opponent get back? Okay, they still don't have. They still haven't played the Witness. Yeah, Kalidus. Yeah, I'm just not a huge. First company, most important thing that has a Bob and a Fast Clock. Yep. And that's not what we have going on here, so this game is going to get difficult. This is a surprising play from my opponent. They must be coming in. They must be coming in with a second main phase for this Misty Rain for this Eternal Witness, because like you're exposing this to a discard spell, unless you have a spell caller. Okay, so here comes the Eternal Witness. They're getting back collected company with with most likelihood. Yep. Okay. So how do I win? He's gonna company on his turn. How do I win? I kind of want to see if I can get him to collect a company on his turn and then untap and have the combination of Pyroclasm and Maelstrom Pulse finish the game off. And I think how I'm going to do that is I'm going to try to Lightning Bolt this Kitchen Finks because if my opponent casts Collect Company in response, try to hit Spellcrawler, and then I clear the board with Pyroclasm plus Maelstrom Pulse, I can then bolt my opponent's face. Like, it's just better than Fatal Pushing. There's no point really firing up the Ravine because of the Ghost Quarter. I guess actually I can just fire up Ravine because of Ghost Quarter. And it's just kind of free. So I guess we're going to go... If my opponent doesn't Ghost Quarter me, then it's kind of annoying. But I kind of want to be Ghost Quartered. But then... Oh, that was dumb because then it cuts off my red plan. I guess I'll just try to Fatal Push something. I'll go to the beginning of combat try to Fatal Push this Noble Hierarch. Um, I, I, I took a, I don't have a mountain, so I did make a mistake here. So we're going to get, we'll get a, uh, swap. Um, I played Pyroclasm and it's probably wrong in this deck just because I have like the death shadow stigma 
that I just want the cheaper card. Okay, so we're gonna. I want to incentivize my opponent. I hopefully hopefully this prompts a collected company from them. This is what we're looking for. This is just purely a bait. Probably a poor play, and they didn't go for it. Well, no, I didn't want it. So the delicious waffles. I wanted to incentivize them to collect a company on their main phase. What I can do is untap and try to bolt this kitchen finks, and then hopefully they they get something from that. that. That incentivizes them to do something. So let's go. Actually, the scavenging ooze is probably, but they have a, so I'm going to try to bolt this kitchen finks. And then hopefully this incentivizes something. And I know that I'm making like poor plays here, but I don't think that I can beat this company from my opponent without like some really lucky, um, like my opponent has to play into a point where this pyroclasm works and they're currently not doing that. So I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this scavenging news now because if my opponent like goes for a path then they can't company. I should have tapped the swamp, but that doesn't really matter. Yeah, I mean, I gotta. I was really hoping that they were gonna do something on their main phase, but they just never did. And now I've kind of made it obvious that I've got something going on here. But what are you gonna do? Like we're in a we're in a tough spot here. I'm gonna have to get a lot of value out of this pyroclasm, so. All right, so I guess before they untap, I'm gonna get something. I'll get this Knight of the Reliquary. So now they're gonna attack with everything. Two, four, six, plus 10, 12. So you have to block, I'm gonna block voice. Because then hopefully the pyroclasm plus maelstrom pulse, with any luck, hopefully it clears the board. I don't think I had a lot. Of, I think I had to do it. Oh, this sucks. Now, hopefully, my opponent paths me now. Because it doesn't understand. I don't understand my opponent's... They're going to path, path me in the upkeep. Come on. God. I think you play Scoos, so it's unlikely... It probably is. And now my opponent's just like hardcore telegraphing pyro or hardcore telegraphing whatever it is. Um I can't think. Uh they're telegraphing spell queller. So I guess what we're gonna do here, we're gonna start off with a pyroclasm. Yeah, no, I just I just got caught up in the death shadow like I want the cheaper option. So that's why I played Pyroclasm. That's what I'm used to playing. And like in hindsight, it, it was not great. Okay, so my opponent just lets that go. So I think I've just, as sad as this is, my opponent has played in such a way that's made this game very difficult for me. And it could be that I'm just not playing very well and I've made some, like, I made some questionable plays. Like, I know that because I thought I was so far behind that I had to get lucky. And I had to kill his ooze because his ooze is just going to be so much better than mine is because um, he's got more green mana. And, like, it's, he's, he's 
got a board present. So I basically would have to chump block it anyways. So now I get to get the ooze off the table and get mine off. So we get two for one, but it's not good. Playing too slowly. That could be a thing. My opponent's just the ninth mana creature. So we have three mana again. I, this, this just... this. I mean, I guess what they would have... They would have spell card last turn, so I'm not going to play around spell card. So I guess I fire up this Raging Ravine. Bait the path. Once they have Spellcaller down, I'll bolt this. They need two more creatures to make this lethal, I guess. So they gotta path this. Right? They gotta have a spell. And Spellcaller gets me no matter what because it turns gets this out of range here. Okay. Okay, so we did get around that. Okay, we get pit for three. So you have path X. Yeah, they got us. So I think, so I don't really know, I don't really know what went wrong in that game. And I know something went wrong. I don't really know what went wrong in that game, and I know I did something wrong. And... I think it could, like, you can base it on, like, how the draws lined up. It was really awkward in the beginning how I had so much removal in my hand and my opponent didn't give me any targets. Yeah. It's a hard game when I I'm trying to think of a replay it, but... We're getting, we're getting beat up in this league, though. Yeah, we're going to keep this hand. we got a removal spell. It's not. It's okay versus a combo deck because Bob's going to hopefully help us and we have Hazoret. Like We have a bunch of good threats. We don't have discard, which kind of sucks. But I don't think you can throw this hand back. We got ourselves an old-fashioned mirror going on here. What is this? I didn't play Rabble Master, Nilla. Um... Yeah. Okay, so my opponent's got their own scoos. I think I'm just going to bolt their scoos and play a tap land because I don't want to play into Liliana the Veil, making that be uh, a two for one. And if I, like, if my opponent just starts playing and ticking up Liliana, it's going to turn on my Hazard quicker. So like this could mean this could leave me pretty susceptible to so I'm not gonna bullet now, but it could leave me pretty susceptible to a bob, which I don't want to do. So I think we're just gonna go like this and pass. I really dislike playing threats into Liliana when we're I hate playing two drops on the draw in this matchup. Because it just makes Liliana the best card in their deck. So I'm gonna play. I'm going to take two here, and then I'll probably, I might bolt, I'm not sure. Depends on the quality of their hand. Don't worry, bolt, I'm just going to pass again. Play this, we're going to wait. I would disagree that that's actually a huge advantage on an empty board because Liliana is like your best card. And if you are going Liliana plus, you're discarding random cards, which means that you could be discarding a card that has less value than theirs and you're not getting a two for one of your card. 
I think that being able to play Liliana down is the way to get the advantage in this matchup. See, now my opponent's not doing anything, which means, like, I should just bolt this Liliana right now. And then I'll deal with it later. But now I just traded... This is why this card's not good unless you're edicting with it. Because I just traded... We both just traded one for one with their bomb that I've been playing around. Which means they probably have another one. So now I'm going to play double Tarmogoyf. Yeah, but Liliana, not when you have a bunch of cards in hand. You know, like you just play two threats. And like, I think Liliana on four is not very good. I should have played my Bloodstained Meyer so this doesn't get bolted. Oh man, that was a mistake. So now my opponent can just untap. I'm just saying, I don't think Liliana is very good in this matchup unless you are doing it to hit a creature. If you're edicting, then it's good. If you're not edicting, I don't think it's very good. I think just playing it on the board, spending three mana, and just to tick up random cards against your opponent isn't where you want to be. So now my opponent's going to play Liliana Tick Down, and then I'm going to play... I'm not saying it's not great in the mirror, the Delicious Waffles. I'm saying that if you are playing it and plussing, it is not very good. I think you want to be playing it and edicting. You want It's your best card in the mirror. Get a two for one out of it. Because if they just tick up and you have Abrupt Decay, it's not good. If they tick up and they go like threat, threat, then you get a card. And if you don't have stuff to back it up with, it's not very good. Yes, Liliana is terrible in the Abzan mirror. You're right about that. So this is a Liliana. What do you got? You edict. So if we draw land, we go land, push, bob. Then this hazard should do good for us. Unless they're sandbagging a discard spell, which would suck. I just think this card's so good that you do not want to be playing this on an open board. You want to get use out of the edict. Like here, we're going to go up a card in our opponent. Just as they did for me, we're going to toss two for ones back at each other. And then I'm going to keep this land in my hand. If they, if they go Kologon's command, like hit return. Wow, this has it's gonna be gas. I don't want to discard. I guess I'm losing my Liliana with my line of play. Unless I discard Bob. If I discard Bob, I can go land. Well, how do I get It's a it's a one for one, but it's your best card in the matchup. You shouldn't you should get more than a one for one out of your best card in the matchup. So how do I, do I care if he wastes his turn to Ravine? I think I'm going to ditch the land. And I'm okay if my, if my opponent wants to sink their turn into killing this Liliana on the crackback. Jeez, my opponent's been on this been on the struggle bus matchup wise. That was a very good draw. So let's go up here. We'll get his last card, and then we'll eat. What is this? He's gonna bolt my Liliana. That's a good play from the opponent there.
smack this. Then we he opponent cracks me for four. We play Bob with push up. Oh, I can't attack her block. No. Oh my god, I didn't count right. I didn't count right. No. I was so worried about counting right that I messed up. Ugh. Oh my god. And now we're just out of this game. Now this game's over. Because of the hazard or this thing here. I guess it's not over if we rip a fetch land. If we rip a, rip a fetch land, we've got a chance, I guess. Oh, that was so bad. Math. Math's hard, dude. Math's hard. Uh, what do I want to do? I guess I just play Bob. Take a shot from this Kalidus. Hit this Ravine. Take five, probably. And hopefully draw an answer to this. Hopefully they don't find a way to kill this Bob. You'd push the token. Thoughtsies happens. He gets a push. I'm just switching it up here. I I, I would play five color shadow. If I had like a large tournament to go to, I'd play five color shadow. But just playing something more fun. I had a, like a I had kind of a crappy week week at work. Just long week, and I just wanted to do something fun that was different. So my opponent should attack for five. If they just attack for five, I'm still not going to push the token. I'm going to make my opponent. My opponent's going to fire up Raging Ravine. I don't think I like this play from my opponent. I think five color shadow is incredibly interesting. I think you have, like, so many deck building constraints. You've got, like... You've got situations like, uh, what was I saying? Um, there's just so many deck build. There's deck building constraints. Sideboarding's interesting. The like little plays in between are interesting. I think five color shadow is like a very, uh, very good, very fun deck to play with with a lot of different decisions in it. All right, we're gonna play this out. And then am I blocking? How do I win? My opponent comes in for five. I go to three with two bobs. I can just trade here. I can offer to trade. Do I offer to double block? Double block doesn't work because he just eats. I probably win by hitting a removal spell for this. Take two, hit a removal spell for this. Attack here. Do I just take five? Go to three with two bobs. Isn't every magic deck super draw dependent to delicious waffles? Like I'm confused there. I think it's not really draw dependent. I think it's a very consistent deck. I'm not gonna block. I'm gonna attack with my Bob. I'm gonna draw two cards and then hopefully not die to that and then hopefully find a way to deal with this Kalidus within those two draw steps. Like it's a long shot, but I think it's how I win is I just find a way to like draw enough cards to deal with this and deal with the remnants of it and then i have to because I, I need to i need to finish it next turn i think in order to win and the longer this kalita stays in play the worse it gets for me like i'm stuck between a rock and a hard place like i'm not really excited about where i am I would not, yeah, I'm not about, not about that life. My opponent, I want to, now they shouldn't eat, because then that makes Liliana a live draw. 
Arm of life. We have the pause, yeah. All right, so let's see if we can not butcher this. So I know I want this. I want this. I want this. And I want this. I know I don't want these. So the question is, uh, I probably want the brutalities because they at least kill Dark Confidant. I think you're I think you're misevaluating the deck there. But I've played I've played my challenge before and never talked about it. So huh. I think this is what we want to do. I could see like cutting a land for a spell bomb. Because I mean he might have his own Spell bomb doesn't really do anything, I guess. It's not like he's lingering souls. I think this is what we're gonna do. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think that the deck is like I think it's a good comeback material because like you just play like I think any Death Shadow has good ability to come back in games because you can create card advantage by just playing massive creatures and having them like putting them on tough positions to chump block. Team or battle rage brings you back from behind. Um what else? So I think I just think you're I think that cutting land seems loose. The games are gonna go long. Yeah, I mean one minute it's you're you're like you're abyssing. Like putting people in the abyss is a way to it's card advantage. It's coming back from behind. I don't know. But like the, every deck has the deck has flaws. There's no doubt about it. Like your mana base is fragile. That's the biggest flaw. You do have these really weird draws. So I find that, like, when I'm playing against Burn or something like that, I either, like, blow Burn out of the water or I, I get wrecked by Burn. I don't find a lot of close matches. The close matches against Burn are some of the most fun matches to play with that Shadow. But, like, you get to the point where you just can't thread the needle with a threat and then your deck's useless because you have to do damage to yourself to get it to work. But if you don't have a Traverse or a Death Shadow, then, like, you're just... And again, we lost that game because I made a mistake, which kind of sucked. Like, I miscounted. I think we played our way to be in way ahead position there, and I just, I threw the game. I literally just, like, miscounted and threw it. And I even think we would have won that game. We could have won that game had our opponent not drawn Kalidas after I threw the game. So I, th I think we played well, but just went full moron. I don't think we want this. I think we want a land. <laughs> How long have we been going for? Going for three hours and 17 minutes. We've been moving through. This is match eight, I think. I mean, we're not, we're going to play it. Like, it's probably not going to work out, but I think it's, I think it's what we've got to do. We just cross our fingers. We just hope our opponent kept a, a hand that's threat dense, not answer dense. Yeah. I mean, that was wishful thinking for sure. Okay, and then we're going to pass. At least we've got five spells. Like. Yeah, 
that is bad. All right. I'll probably ditch this brutality. Because this is just a worse removal spell than each one of these cards here. Just hope he doesn't have a abrupt decay. That would kind of suck. Like, we're not doing much with Liliana, but we can't just sit here in the face of this Liliana. Because this Liliana is much better in this matchup than this Liliana is. And at least this will turn off Kalidus. Okay. So what do I want here? I want, like, that's not bad. So we're going to get rid of this. Play this Overgrown Tomb. And then look to just empty our hand here. Especially if my opponent rebuys this, and this Hazret should be able to do something for us here. It's time, Hazret. It's time for you to shine. Okay? I want to see Hazret do something in these mirrors here. I've been really happy with this card outside throughout like my my games here that have but like it just so I want to see if it's really good here, too. 34 viewers. Again, guys, thank you very much for all of your support. Uh, if you liked what you see, please hit the follow button. And if not, then that's just being here is good enough. If you guys need any Magic Online stuff, you should check out Card Hoarder. As they sponsor the stream. And today's, that's what today's stream is brought to you by. Card Hoarder is great. Maybe cast pushes. So I think that I, I, while I want to have an empty hand, I think it's more important to... Um, I think it's just more important to get this hat... To get a... Uh, what was I going to say? Gosh, I I'm just losing my mind today. I think it's more important to trade resources for spells. My opponent's tanking here. I mean, this Liliana is, like, could win this game for sure. Okay, they're going to they're gonna rebuy. Hopefully they get a Tarmogoyf. No, they get Cletus. So again, I think I can get away with waiting here. Why didn't I just cast Hazret? I guess I forget that you can cast Hazret from time to time. I didn't want to expose it to his own Liliana the Veil, also. And that, like maybe he doesn't have it also, so. So now we go fetch, get an overgrown tomb, or maybe a stomping ground to get another red source. And then I think I'm gonna keep my Liliana at two. Well, we got lucky with our draw there, but I could have done it. I probably could have done it either way. Now we counter right with Hazret. And then I don't think... Do I want to tick up with my Liliana? No, I don't think I do. I'd rather keep the card in my hand. And then keep an edict on. This is this play is pretty weak to, um, whatever it is. It's kind of weak to. Uh, K return or not K return? Um. Yeah, it's kind of weak to. Kozlek's return, but what are you gonna do? So we're in a pretty good spot at the moment. So do I want to stay up a card on my opponent, or do I want to just be hell bent? I think I want to keep this Liliana around. So we're going to go up here. Ditch the Black Leaf Cliffs. Push this and then attack. It would have been interesting to see what I'd done there if I hadn't drawn a land. If I'd have drawn like a spell, something that I couldn't play on the board. If I'd drawn a spell, I probably would have just pushed this and then just held steady. It is frustrating how some of these games play out sometimes. Like, 
you sit here and my opponent made some good plays. I did. I made some like questionable. I I made uh, I made plays that like. I don't know how to say this, but like I made some questionable plays, and just because I ripped harder than my opponent did, like I'm probably gonna win this game. Like this has ripped. Like I guess I'm worried about a Liliana from my opponent will be pretty bad. Yep, see, that's another plan, game plan there. I've been playing with the Hazret, and I didn't know I could do that. Like, I'm – so something that I'm doing here, why I'm really thankful for this um, sponsorship is that I struggle a lot at making – at playing with new cards and being in new situations. I'm a very intrinsic – I'm a very uh, instinct-driven magic player, and I make mistakes when I'm not comfortable with my cards, if that makes sense. You know, so like I didn't know I could do that. So I just I hadn't seen it happen before. So that's why it's good that I've got these different um, different things to do different, not different things. Um, I can play these different decks. So now I can see them from their side. Like one of my favorite formats of all time is cube draft. But whenever I cube draft, it's just an absolute shit show because I make a bunch of mistakes because I've played with cards I've never played with before. Yeah, you're, you're right there as well. Like, and that's a problem with like... So here's the good and bad part about streaming. Like, the chat has been really good. Like the delicious waffles has been like we've been kind of arguing a little bit back and forth on plays and like my attention is split between this right now. And I'm looking to chat, have a conversation instead of necessarily playing magic. So, and that's part of streaming. Like if you, and that's part of why I did it. Yeah. Yeah, you're 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 right. You're 100 percent right there, Night MGG. That's what we should have done, but it's not what happened. My opponent's got a 62 card deck. Huh. Did their homework? I didn't. Pulse is a good draw. I know that I definitely give a lot of streamers a huge benefit of the doubt here after playing it more and like, you know, after playing with them more and then uh, playing after streaming, I give them a lot of more leeway when it comes to their plays because it's difficult. Um, what are we doing? That's a good card there. So I think I'm going to play Black Leaf Cliffs. I wonder what I'm discarding. I'm probably discarding, if my opponent plays Liliana, I think I'm discarding Terminate. I could discard a land just for, like, ultimate greed. These John Mirrors are fun. I played Abzan previously before. I played Naya Company for, like, four years. It was, like, big Naya. This is back, like, when you played, like, Domri Radnet and all that. That's what I began playing. And then um, I switched over about two years ago. I started playing Abzan because the modern after Splinter Twin got banned and Eldrazi Winter was over, the format just began to like degenerate, in my opinion, into where just you couldn't play a fair deck, a deck that was that fair. So I had to get Thoughtseize in my deck. It is a pulse. Okay, so we want to go beginning. We're gonna stop at the end of our opponent's main phase. I would like to Kologon's command that, but I just don't really want to deal with the random 1-1. One, one. So now we're definitely ditching lands. Yeah, it is a pulse. It's just what they gave me. The art on it's pretty sweet, though. Tom McGoyf. There's a land in the graveyard. 
God, play like a Bob. Play something that I can command and untap and smoke this thing. Well, I wonder if I'm actually going to untap and smoke this thing because of this Raging Ravine. This Raging Ravine is going to make this Planeswalker a little harder to deal with. Was it? Cody Jones, how you doing? How's the, how's the GC thing going? So I, I don't really know. I kind of want to just Maelstrom Pulse this. I don't really want to offer up my Chandra to this Raging Ravine. So I think I want to sandbag this Chandra until I get more stable. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I want I want as many green sources as possible. I want to be able to win scavenging news. But I don't want to kill it with Chandra and then lose it to this. I think I would much rather wait to play my Planeswalkers until I can defend it with this. Because it just, it just seems kind of mopey to trade my... I, I trade my 4-drop... I'm trading my 4-drop high-impact card for a 2-drop my opponent's turn. So like maybe that's all right. I think I would agree with that delicious waffles. I think I'm, I'm inclined to pulse this. What I really wish I had was a creature. I wish I had a creature to line up this Liliana and this male and this uh, Colagon's command with. Mm hmm. Well, another thing about modern. So wait, um, G three man, thank you very much for the follow. I appreciate it if you're still in there. I think I'm just gonna pulse this. This raging ravine is gonna be a problem, though. So maybe I should just play Chandra. Minus, because I don't have any answers to this Raging Ravine. And then kind of like, because it'll buy me a turn, at least if my Chandra trades. And if I don't have any answers to this Raging Ravine, none of my Planeswalkers are going to trade. I think I'm actually going to play Chandra and hit this Tarmogoyf. Because as it stands right now, without an answer to this Raging Ravine... My opponent can just like smack me and then they can smack me again. And then if my opponent doesn't have a uh, a way to deal with this Chandra, then I'm in good sh then if they don't have a land, then I'm in pretty good shape. It's certainly not great, but at least I'm Trading one for one and time walking my opponent at the minimum. Oh, he's going to bolt. Oh, wow. Wow. That is like the biggest blowout. Oh, God. Oh, that was, that was a huge blowout. So now I get cracked. Now I need to draw, like, a Fatal Push. If I draw a Fatal Push, I'm still in a good shape. So, effectively, my Lightning Bolt traded for... Lightning Bolt traded for a Chandra, which isn't great. And again, like, if we lose this match, it comes down to the fact that I was just, like, not counting right in Game 1. Yeah, that's kind of what that felt like there. Really plus hold up push. I like the Hazrets. I like the Hazrets. I'm not sure how good they are in the mirror, but I think I like Hazret purely because it's aggressive and gives you a clock against unfair decks. And it's also just another way to turn your useless. Because, like, in game one, I often find that, like, even with Death Shadow, in game one, you have very much of, like, a half and half of your deck. And one, it's very, it's not typical that, like, all of your deck is good in game one. So Hazard just turns into another way to turn like your bad cards into like something at least. So again, we draw, so what is this? This is eight. So we're actually just dead on board now. 
we need to draw like a fatal push or we need to draw a Tarmogoyf of our own to block. Because this is eight, we go and then this becomes five next turn. So yeah, we tossed this one pretty hardcore. So I guess we'll go, we'll see if our opponent goes for it here. We'll pulse this. <coughs> and then I'll play Bloodstained Mire. And we shall pass. So we got absolutely ruined in that exchange there. But a big problem that we've had here, I think, is that we just haven't drawn, like, these cards would've been much better if we'd had something to block, you know, or to impact the board. We've just been, like, so reactive this whole game. All right, we'll concede here. I think I'm gonna hop back in for one, maybe one more league. I guess it's noon. Draw cards, we're out of there. been getting absolutely turned up here i think we're gonna i think we're gonna call it for the day um what we are going to do is we are going to send you guys over to a friend stream so um i appreciate everybody for watching today i guess i'll throw the deck up here I thoroughly liked Hazret. I think Hazret's like where you want to be here. So, so I'll see. Uh, so I'll see all of you guys next time. I appreciate everybody for hanging out, and I hope everyone has a good rest of their Sunday.